Welcome to, to room and board. the oh, painting you're... class. Oh, wait, yeah. Zach, welcome to me teaching you painting. And Zach is my assistant who I'm going to show. I'm so eager to learn how to paint. How to paint. Um, I, I want to, Zach, why don't you, since you're my apprentice yep. and this is your test, uh, why don't you walk us through the setup that I have forcibly made you set up over there and tell us what we're going to be painting today. This is a painting tutorial for people who suck at painting. Like, like me. Zach, and not me, who's <laughs> who's really good. Yeah, so if you, if you have a board game collection mm -hmm. and a bunch of little models and you're like, it would be too much work to put paint on these, this is your your lesson to learn that it's, it's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. um, we have a bunch of models to paint, but I, I bet... I bet if you followed these steps along and you had just like a handful of models, you probably finished them in the same time as this video. You could paint them up, no problem. So get your supplies, put this video on while you drive to the store, and yep. only look at us uh, while you're driving. If the guy at the store says turn the music down or the you, sound down, you slap them. You turn them right up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You push them. You take what you need. Hobby and, store people love to be pushed. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna get painting. All right, Zach. Walk us through what our setup is, and then we're gonna go go outside to do some of this. Yeah. But um. Yeah. Um. So pretty simple. We have all of uh, Chris's massive darkness number two uh, mob monsters. Um. We're gonna get some paint on them. Um. We have some paper so we don't ruin my table. Uh. We have some cups of water. We have a paint collection, which we will largely not use. <laughs> Look at the, the, what a beautiful box. Where'd you get that box, Zach? That's a sewing box from Ikea. Nice. Because, you know, you don't need to buy expensive hobby stuff. They can sell you one of those at a hobby store for like $200. That yeah. was like nothing. Anyway, nice. the other equipment you're going to need if you want to follow along. A little ball of stick tack, which you can get at Staples. Uh, <laughs> a box from Amazon or a pizza box or any kind of box. Um... And then right here we have spray paint cans. This is a hobby quality uh, spray paint. Uh, it's going to do the job. It's going to be a little bit more expensive than the other paint I have. Um, so, but if you can't find something like this, hobby paint, um, you can just use Rust-Oleum spray paint. You can get at a home hardware or at a Canadian tire. Uh, I'm assuming probably most of your audience, Chris, doesn't. <laughs> Have a Canadian tire. <laughs> well, you never know. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's that. We're going to go out. We're going to spray paint the last minis we haven't spray painted. Mm -hmm. uh, and teach Chris how to spray paint a mini. And teach you as well. The last minis we haven't spray painted. It doesn't seem like we spray painted any of them. Oh, Chris. we've These are all spray painted. These are all spray painted? Those are all spray painted. What? If you look at the original color, that's oh. gray. And we've just gone for a slightly lighter gray. Whoa, now, they are spray painted. Yeah, and now the reason we're spray painting them to start with is not to get color on them. Yeah. It is to get uh, a, a base layer of paint on them so that the other paints we're going to put on, the acrylic paints, are going to stick to the models. Um, we're also going to be using some speed painting techniques uh, that use contrast and other, other see-through paints. So we want a lighter color on the models so that that lighter color will shine through the, the opaque paint we're using. Now, for um, all of you who just got scared <laughs> from those terms that Zach was using, um, I'm going to explain to you right now what those th things are. The speed painting techniques. Uh, b uh, basically... So, <laughs> uh, contrast paint and speed paints are basically a really thin acrylic paint. Um, and when you put them on... Um, They'll flow into the, the cracks and the lower crevices of the model, mm -hmm. and the color will be really vivid there. But on the higher le higher points, the paint will be thinner, and the, whatever the color your model is underneath will shine through, right? Nice. So if we paint the model a lighter color... Like that light gray. Like that light gray, that light gray will make uh, the higher portions of the model lighter and the, the darker inset portions a, a more vibrant color. And so you'll, you'll, get, you'll get shading in one step. Now, because uh, we're just gonna be doing a basic wash and that just means like one sort of color yep. on it and, and just letting letting things pop out. Um, is there a reason why we didn't do a white primer or a black primer and instead we opted for this lighter gray primer? So if you wanted to do just flat colors and you didn't want to worry about speed paints or contrast yep. paints, you could totally use a black primer. Um, if you're gonna do like really detailed 
fiddly painting. Yeah. Black primer is really good because you can always see where you've put your paint mm -hmm. in contrast with the black. We could have used white. I just happen to have a gray hobby paint on me. Great. Yeah. And so it's it's not, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you can kind of get your hands on. Yeah. Right? That's the advice that I personally, as expert painter, would give you. And something you'll see on YouTube if you're looking up the painting views, all painting videos all the time, is people saying you, you use black, use gray, use white. Um, you can, if you want your minis to be blue, just get a blue spray paint and end right there. So that's a good point. <laughs> that's a really good point because what I really like in like Rising Sun, uh, all the minis are the are a different color, and sometimes you want that for different like player colors. The reason why we wanted to do this for Massive Darkness is because each of the mobs, uh, when they're on the board. They, they blend yeah. together. We played a game a little while ago. Yeah. And we the, were overrun. The, the boss monster was spawning mobs. Yeah. And the board was covered with mobs and it was just a sea of gray. And we couldn't tell which mobs were which, which ones we had fought. Because if you look, and we're going to turn the camera on, so you may be hearing it a little, little bit less because I've turned the mic around. But, you know, I'll just talk a little bit quicker. You can see, like, the, the sort of swath of stuff when it's laid out on the table, you don't really see. But if you move along, Zach's already kind of started on these. Uh, and has added in a bunch of stuff. And we'll talk about those when we get to the actual painting process and use those as, as examples. But um, you can see how those pop out. And whereas these all just kind of look the same, especially when you're like, okay, I need to move these two figures and move them over. Um, that's what, uh, that's why we're gonna get to get to business right now. Yeah. So we're gonna go outside to do this. We are. Um, and you're gonna need two things when you go outside, or a couple things. Mm -hmm. Your box of minis, yep. your box of minis stuck to them with stick tack, like this. which is what I've done. Nice. Uh, you're gonna need your spray paint. Uh, you're gonna want some kind of glove. Uh, oh, that was from my murder earlier. <laughs> uh, Did you do that just for me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told Zach that I wanted to start this uh, video of me, me walking in and just seeing him stabbing someone off to the side and saying that's how he got his, um, his red paint. But uh, now I've given up that joke. Yeah, you've just told, you've given up the bit. We could have run this whole conceit over the entire video. I can cut it. Oh, all right. <laughs> anyway, you're going to need some... Murder! <laughs> you're going to want some plastic gloves. Because, yeah. um, you know, paint is going to hurt you the first time you play with it. Uh, it's not going to hurt you the tenth time you play with it. But, um, you know, paint can have, like, toxic stuff in it. You don't want it on your skin if you can avoid it. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then we'll get to what all of these are in the different colors... We'll get to all of that uh, later. Yeah. Um, again, this is this is painting for dummies. Yeah. I've got my dummy, so don't leave him behind when you go outside <laughs> to spray paint. That's true. The one thing you need is a painting dummy. <laughs> and luckily, as the painting uh, expert here, um, I'm willing to take on that role to, to, you know, for all of you dummies out there. Oh. Uh, not me, who definitely is very artistic and talented. Yeah. Bolster his pride with, with lovely comments, praising him. Uh, let's go outside. Okay. <laughs> shut up, Zach. Oh, shut up. Now say what you said again. Oh, okay. Cradle so, that can. Cradle that paint, baby. I'm going to cradle this can. So it is fall. Yeah. Uh, we're in Canada. Uh, it's cold. The leaves. Uh, yeah. This is the slowest zoom in <laughs> I've ever done in my whole life. Oh, it was very slow. <laughs> I was I was expecting a better it's anyway it's cold it's anyway Canada. it's cold um, you don't want to spray paint when it's too cold out so in all the spray paint cans there's paint there's a chemical which I don't know what it is that keeps the paint from becoming salt like hard I don't know Just, I and then there's there's obviously the aerosol part of the can um, when you spray the paint out of a spray paint can uh, the paint will hit the surface you want then the the chemical evaporates away and the paint hardens. When it is cold out, the paint will freeze before it reaches your model. Um, which, you know, you mean you'll throw snow at your model instead of paint. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that, that snow will still be tacky. It'll stick to whatever you're spraying it at. And you'll get like sandpaper texture all over your model. Um, if it is just a little cold like this, but the paint comes out kind of cool, that chemical will evaporate slower than it would otherwise. Um, and it can make the paint run and do weird things on your model. So you want it to kind of be, you, you don't want it to be too hot, you don't want it to be too cold. Um, what do you think it is right now, Zach, like three degrees Celsius? I don't have a sense for these things. Yeah, let's call it, let's say three. 
No, let's say let's say six. Okay. Let's say six. You know what? We can impress here. It's minus forty <laughs> here in Canada. Well, no, we need to be accurate. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So if it was too much colder than this, I'd probably say we'll, we'll we'd prime these models with a paintbrush um, or wait for the sun to be up in it to be a little warmer. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm keeping the can warm. Uh, I'll take the camera now, Chris. Yeah. And we'll get you. Actually, yes, we'll get you. We'll, we'll get, get you we'll get all up. set up in terms of ready to go. I'm very excited. And I am playing the part of someone who this is their first time really painting like literally anything in their almost 34 years of existence. That's the role I'm playing. As yeah, I'm, the, I'm the student here. Yeah. He is the sensei. Yeah, yeah. Just it might look clear. like I know everything. Yeah. Uh, but it's an act. Yeah, it's an I, act for I'm the camera. feeding Zach the word. No, this is test. Again, it's test. You're going to have to let him know how he did. Oh, be careful, well. Chris. You almost had the teleprompter on screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that would have been, that been yeah, bad. Yeah, it would have given um, away the whole bit. All right, let's, let's get... I'm going to get suited up with my one glove and uh, get ready to get started. Okay. So. All right. Chris, what is the, now Zach, it was part of your test. What is the proper um, okay, this, spray painting technique? This is actually pretty important. Yeah. So you want to make sure your can is well shaken before you start spray painting. Yeah. Um, you're going to hold the, the, the thing at arm's length. Yeah. As much as you possibly can. Oh yeah. You want about this distance from your uh, thing, almost a foot. Okay. Right. You don't want to go too close or the paint will hit and splatter. Right. You don't want to go too far or it'll dry too much before it reaches your model. Yeah. Gotcha. When you start, here, one second. <laughs> I'm in the position. <laughs> when you start spraying, you don't want to start spraying pointed at the model mm -hmm. because it'll send, when you first start spraying, big blobs will shoot out. Right. And they'll get stuck and they'll dry quick and you'll ruin your model. Got it. So you want to- It'll be ruined. Well, not ruined. There's no fixing it? I'm hyperbole, hyperbole. <laughs> Um, this is for, for beginners. We need to we need to put people at ease here, Zach. Your models are gonna be fine. Okay. You start spraying not pointed at the model. All right. You pass over them. Yeah. And you don't stop spraying until you've passed the model. That makes sense. Same thing. It'll shoot globs when you let go of the thing. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So you wanna spray, pass, stop. Spray, pass, stop. Spray, pass, stop. Right. You wanna give it a good like half second between each run. All right. Then you're gonna turn it. Go on the just side. Just move around. Gotcha. Okay. All right. I'm I'm. Uh, I'm acting, but I'm very nervous. <laughs> but that's an act, okay? Uh, oh, oh one right. other thing. You don't want to get paint in your lungs. That's true. So while you're spraying, either wear a mask. We should have worn masks. Yeah. Or don't breathe while you're spraying the paint. <laughs> take a take a deep breath. That's a good that's a good tip. Yeah. Also, if you're out there and you 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 spray painted before, you might say, "I spray painted without a mask. It's never hurt me." This kind of thing builds up and sneaks up on you later in life. That's true. Cool. All right. I've assumed the position. I'm not doing it towards the camera because I don't no. want paint on my camera. So I'm going here. Okay. I'm very nervous. <laughs> I'm very nervous. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna anchor myself. And I'm making sure it's well shooken. All right. Here we go. You ready? Ready. You're a little close. Okay. <laughs> well, how was that? That's fine. Oh, I got it in my lungs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Save the commentary till you're done okay. spray. Okay. <laughs> what about this wind, Zach? <laughs> yeah, so what about the wind. I spray painted some stuff earlier, and I knew the wind was flowing in this direction, <laughs> so I didn't bother to say anything. <laughs> Try to spray with the wind. Anyway, uh, now Zach, why don't we? Uh, do you want this? It's all right. I already got paint on me. Well, I don't know. We got to do it. We got to put you're our. Right, uh, you're right. We got to put our best foot forward. Best foot forward. I, I, I figure you've seen the best. <laughs> now you can see the rest. Um, yeah, I'm already way too intimidated to continue doing this. If if I were on my own, I'll be completely honest. With really? You. Yeah, I'm just like ah, it's not getting everywhere. It's not getting on stuff. All right. Um, so how can I assuage those fears? Or if, or if people are like me, um, I dumb idiot babies like me. So hopefully you've watched this video and that will bolster both, both your confidence. Uh -huh. um, secondly, if you're using a brand new can, all of the fail things I've talked about, about splurting blobs and stuff like that, yeah. probably aren't going to happen. Okay. So um, I'm talking about stuff that might become more important if you spray paint minis a lot. Right. If you're doing this right. to get that one game you want painted, painted. You shouldn't worry too much. Okay, gotcha. that's good. That's good. Um, also, 
You're worried. Do you think you've covered up any of their detail? No, no. It's totally fine. I think they look pretty good. I just don't feel like I've got enough on them. The reason they sell spray paint at every Home Depot, at every hardware store, at gas stations, it, it's it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an invention <laughs> that, that works, guys. Right? <laughs> if it was if it was prone to failure, it wouldn't be right, as prevalent as popular. As yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to finish up these. Okay, yeah, just show, show us finishing up with your technique. I'm just trying to make sure that the paint gets into all of the little crevices. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm doing this up and down motion. Want to get them in the back. And that's that. They're primed, Chris. They're primed. They're primed. Now these are ponies on the other side. Yeah. So I'm gonna go pink. That was a little a little uh, surprise that you planned for me. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's go to the other side. And you see, I put stick tack on them so that while I'm out here kneeling down. In the, in the alley behind my apartment. Yeah. <laughs> These aren't going to get lost. Oh, look at that. Those look exciting. We'll get, we'll get the close-up after. It's much more forgiving to paint with color paint because you always see where your paint is right. and where it's not. Yeah, the gray the gray was tough, I found. Yeah. Um anyway, we'll come and we'll do a little zoom in and we'll get that we'll sure. get that sweet spray paint uh, in a place that's uh that's a bit safe. So you can see the uh, the the ponies I did in pink. Yeah. They are with the Rustoleum paint from a from a local hardware store. Yeah. You can see the paint is still wet, mm -hmm. right? It's for, you know, outdoor use and either hard work. So it takes longer to dry. The hobby paint I used earlier is already dry. We right. can paint on these immediately. Wow, yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, totally. Um, and you can see there's, there, there's, it's less glossy, there's less running going on, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So if you are worried about it, spend the extra like $2, and it's only like an extra $2. Um, get, a, get a proper hobby paint from a proper hobby paint store, and, and that, should, that should assuage most of your concerns. If you happen to be a scared little baby, like uh, the character that I'm playing. Yeah. Um, I guess the only other thing to say is these ponies are still going to be wet for another like hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so the hobby paint just drying so quickly. Well, it seemed like you put a little bit more on the ponies. Well, I had to because the ponies have more... They have more under oh, under areas. I see. Right? Yeah. And you can miss some spots with the gray paint on yeah. these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it not be a big deal. We're gonna put paint on them anyway. Yeah. Well I can see too that if um if we look on the on the backs of the gray guys, I see that there might be a little pink splash. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right? Just a little bit, like a that little carryover. I don't know if we, we can really pick it up on the I don't know. Um, it's like really minuscule. Right. I wouldn't worry about that in this case because we're putting another coat of paint on them. Right. If this was, if you were just going to paint these white or yeah. gray or a different color, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do you wouldn't two do colors back at the same back. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but because we are putting paint on these guys, I am, you know, we don't want to film six times every Yeah, day. yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I also did the, the ponies on the same board. Yeah. Some of you might be screaming out there, why didn't you get a long stick and put the models on the long stick to keep them farther away from your body. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have a long stick. <laughs> if I, <laughs> uh, they do sell painting sticks. They're too expensive. Right. Um, you can get like a wooden meter stick yeah. or a piece of wood yeah. um, or a long piece of cardboard instead of a square one. Right. Um, all that works. Um, but don't stress it too much. We're just slapping paint on plastic toys. Yeah. I feel better having seen a professional, <laughs> professional, at least the, the acting professional. Um, uh, your do your that uh, your your performed terror has infected <laughs> me, though. Uh, let's get inside. Let's get inside. <laughs> All right, Zach. So we've got this a bit zoomed out right now, uh, but we might switch. Or I might bring the camera closer um, so we can see a little bit more detail. And we're going to cut in and out of of painting to show you sort of like final result. 
or whatever, but let, let's talk about our next steps. Cool. So we have our primed, ooh, it's still sticky. Yeah, because I've, I've left the stick tack on the basis. Smart. Yeah, so I could, uh, Nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure, I'm just gonna show it closer to the camera. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, this is also this is also great because like, what is this little thing? That is more spray paint. It's more spray paint. Yeah, it's just a, another thing of spray paint. Because I see people get like these very specific mini yeah. holders. Like I see that all the time on online. Yeah, because because the dimension of your hand, especially if you're a bigger person, yeah. I don't have particularly large hands, but people do. Holding this tiny diameter can like give you hand cramps and stuff like that. Right, it can be nicer to hold on to something that fits your hand better. Yeah, right. So, so some people use painting handles. I never have. Yeah, I never really found the use for them. Uh -huh. I know some people get like wine corks and they'll stick mm. stick minis to those. That's a good idea. Um, uh, I <laughs> when I first started, I was like, yeah, you need a painting handle, and I right. I, I made one out of a toilet paper roll. Nice. Um, but like. You know, whatever whatever's comfortable to you. Yeah. Um, but yeah. If you leave if you leave the stick tack that you use from spray painting on the bottom, you can throw them on the shelf. You can mm -hmm. transport them if you're going to paint on the go. Yeah. Um, if you're yeah on the subway. On the uh, subway, just getting your paint out. I feel and... like I've seen TikToks of people <laughs> painting on airplanes, and and that's if that's not a flex, I don't know what is. Um, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> just perfect. The perfect lines. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so what we're going to do is, um, again, our... Use our more spray paint in the house. <laughs> Breathe deep. Um, but yeah, so uh, our goal here is to just get some color mm -hmm. and make sure all of these different mobs yeah. have a different color on them to yeah. differentiate them. Yep. So what I have put beside you over there, Chris... Mm -hmm. Some speed paints. Are some, there's some contrast paints, some speed paints, and uh, I think there's one or two just Vallejo thin paints in there. This is just a cup of... That's a cup of water. What looks like human blood? Um, so pick pick a pick a style of mini. Alright. Let's um, You wanna do the angels? The demons? These look the like other the, demons, these... the other angels? <laughs> yeah. The varied <laughs> the the huge variance that is in the Mass of Darkness. I know. Well the first time I went out prim priming, I put all the guys with wings onto one box and I couldn't <laughs> tell which were which for a little bit. Yeah. Well let's deal with these wing winged creatures. Winged creatures. We're going with the harpies. There should be seven of each kind. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I found a couple more. This is the game in itself. This is Massive Darkness too. <laughs> find the Harpies. Right, well, it'll be easier to find the Harpies from now on because they're going to be a color. That's true. And we're going to paint them green. What do you think a good color for Harpies? Is it blue? I don't know. What color out of your selection over there would you like to go with? Ooh, I like co co contrast. Well, maybe we should decide on the color for all of them before we begin. Oh, okay. Yeah, so here, let's let's set these aside. All right. Let's put put your contrast, your, uh, eight, what is that called? Athermatic. Athermatic blue. This is something that if you're just getting into painting, you're going to discover... Lots of mini paints have really stupid names. <laughs> uh, this is Aethermatic Blue, which I think is yeah. a reference to is a that, bunch of... Is that running right now? Oh, it is... This is Aethermatic Blue, there. which is, I think, a reference to a Games Workshop Sky Dwarf Okay. Uh, in particular. But anyway, lots of mini paints have lots of weird names. Um, I... Sometimes it'd be a lot easier if it just said, like, Light Blue. Okay, great. We're here. Uh, we have them all arranged. Uh, going from my right over, we've got these spear guys, spear zombie guys. We've got the harpies. We have the fire demons, which I already started. Which actually, on. already started. We got the satyrs. We have our little um, goblin goblin orc dwarfs with demon wings. Yeah, I think that's the that's the that's the boss of them, though. Yeah. So it, it doesn't matter so much. Oops. There we go. There we go. Now I can really see a smile. Mm. Uh, we've got some zombie angels. We've got some gargoyles. We have some cupids, and we've got some snake ladies. Yeah. So for the for the paint color, I feel pretty good about this blue be going with those harpies. Yeah, that feels good. They feel like the most um, athermatic of <laughs> of all of these models. All right. Uh, so, um, and then again, just so you know, while you're paint, picking these paints, those are all the paints that are a little see through. Mm -hmm. 
if you want to go any other color, they're much more vibrant colors in this box right. if you want to go with. But I do like the see-through ones, and I'll throw in a, 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 a picture of the ones that you did for Blood Rage. Oh, okay, yeah. Because um, that's what I was imagining, and that's kind of what we're doing, right? Yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah, and, and so what I really loved, uh, Zach did these for me uh, for Blood Rage. I mean, I painted them, on, and Zach learned from it uh, <laughs> for Blood Rage. But in order to give it just that color, right? Like, that's all you need to help things stand out on the board. Um, and so I like this as as the contrast paints yeah. because they're thinner, so they go over over top, right? And if we, as we can see, this is one I put contrast paints on earlier. Uh -huh. um, that looks even like darker than I expected for for a contrast paint. Yeah, well, you can see that there are darker shadows yeah. and lighter on the on the on the upper areas, right? Yeah, there is shadowing or shading. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, you can see that there is some sort of natural shading just from the the texture of the paint. Um, so we're going to go with that. I like how you can see on him, he almost he almost glows a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, not glows, but you know what I mean? He, uh, he looks like there's inner light. I like that. All right. So here, here's the thing, though. We have the Speed Paint Orc Skin, and we also have Contrast Orc Flesh from Citadel. I imagine those are going to be pretty similar. Who knows? Um, green is a color that you never really know what you're going to get. <laughs> really? Um, here, a little, little factoid for you. Mm -hmm. um, I forget what they're called. Little little cones in your eyes that, that detect color. Um, we have more that detect green than any other color. Um, and that's because when we lived in the wild, everything was green. That's true. And you had to be able to tell the difference between leaves and things like that. If you've anyway. ever been to Ireland, there you can see the different shades of green. Like, mm -hmm. legitimately, there's so many different shades of green that you don't get in Canada. That, like, when I was visiting Ryan yeah. that one time that I went. I was blown away by the countryside. Yeah. So I think um, I think it, it is a mistake to just say like, okay, green, that's one color. Right. You can play in the shades of green all day long and um, and and things can still be distinct. It's kind of a side. Pterodon turquoise. Pterodon turquoise is my favorite color. Oh, well, we got to put on something then. It's, it's, it's the most beautiful blue. Wow. You've ever seen. So, well, sucks to be you, Aethermatic. <laughs> 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 the Harveys are in. <laughs> cool. What uh, else is over there? Uh, that's pretty much it. But then we also have the the other things that we could get other colors for in Prime. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll worry about we'll that. We'll worry about that when we get there. Yeah, to. we'll worry about that when we get there. Okay. Let's, as our, as our starter then, mm -hmm. let's, let's do our test model of each one. Okay. Okay? When you start painting, you don't want to disappoint yourself. Yeah. Right? You don't want to commit to painting everything and then to look at it afterwards and, and realize, you know what, this just isn't doing it for me, do a test model. Um, if you don't want to do a test model using the actual models for your game, um, you know, prime a, a piece of plastic, a piece of Tupperware, mm. um, throw some paint on it, see how you feel. Um, and then if we end up not liking any of these colors, Chris. Right, we can just... Uh... Let it dry. Prime them again. Prime them again. Um, and it's not that hard. We're going to be using very thin layers of paint here. Yeah. Um, so we can we can make mistakes all day long and just paint over it. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Which one do you want to start with? Oh, I don't know. I'm too scared. All right. To pick. Let's let's make a little little clearing at the top. Uh huh. And we'll put our, our selections there. All right, I'm putting all the colors that we didn't pick over here. Yeah. Now, um, Zach, wh while we're getting set up here, uh, we have the speed paint and we have the Citadel color. Mm -hmm. Is there any difference between the two? Yes, there are. Um, so right now we're limited by my collection of paints. Yeah. You should not feel limited when you when you go out to to do this kind of thing for yourself, um, you, you should feel limited to Zach's collection of paint. <laughs> you have and to come you, over here and use my paint. And if you if you get anything else than what we've said, you're cut from the channel. You're not, don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think uh, the Citadel contrast paint mm -hmm. um, sort of started this this rush to make these thinner paints yeah. that create these shading effects. Yeah. Um, other companies and a bunch of other companies have done it, have made similar products since. Mm -hmm. Speed Paint is a big competitor just because their paints are really cheap. And they're newer-ish? They're newer-ish. I remember seeing them on Kickstarter. Um, I remember people like really getting excited about yes. them. Yes. Um, mostly excited because they're cheap. They're cheap. Hey, that, that makes me hey, excited. It makes you excited. <laughs> Citadel paints are kind of notoriously expensive. Right. When it comes to miniature paint, oh, this Rough. is a good thing to talk about. When it comes to miniature paint, mm -hmm. um, usually miniature paint tends to have a lot of pigment in it. 
Um, so when, when you're talking about paint, it's got a medium, like acrylic paint anyway, it's got a medium, which is like the glue that dries. You have water, which is what stops the glue from drying. Mm -hmm. And then you have the pigment, which is like a ground up color of powder. Got you. Um, and usually more expensive paints have more of the pigment. Okay. Got you. And that makes sense because then it's more vibrant of a color and right. it's less of the filler. If you're getting to really artist quality oil paints, they have a ton of pigment, right. usually made out of some very, very expensive stuff. Made out of lots of pigs. Uh, miniature paint usually has a lot of pigment in it, uh, which makes it more expensive. Um, they sell them in smaller bottles, which makes them more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and they give them funny names like Athermatic Blue. <laughs> Uh, which are connecting them to like a like a, 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 fr a franchise yeah. or what have you, and that branding makes it more expensive. It's, right. It's KD versus your 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 no name value macaroni and cheese. Right. Um, if you wanted to go to a paint store, like an artist paint store, you could buy a big tub of paint, super highly pigmented. It's going to be expensive. You get like a like a forty dollar tub of like yellow. Mm -hmm. and it'll be more cost effective than getting miniature paints. Right. But you're probably not going to need to use the whole $40 tub. Right. So this is where we get into this weird zone. Why are you using mini paints instead of artist quality paints? Right. Cost evaluation. Cost evaluation. Yeah. The other thing is when people are using miniature paints, they're usually painting an army. And instead of mixing a paint and mm -hmm. trying to get the same color, a hundred times to paint a hundred different minis over yeah. the course of five years, <laughs> right? Because like yeah. you might you might buy some models for your army, yeah, yeah. paint them blue, and then three years later get some more models and want the same blue. Yeah. Instead of trying to write, I have a notebook full of like mix this much of that paint and this much of that paint mm -hmm. and this much water and you'll get this color. Which I, it's it's a lot of work. If you can buy a tube that just says Athermatic Blue and you always know it's going right. to be that blue, that has a value to it all on its own. Right. So unless they discontinue the color, unless they discontinue the color, which happens all the time. <laughs> um, the, yeah, look at you working for big <laughs> miniature paint over here, trying to sell the people on the expensive one. You're like, listen, you're going to save your life down the line in those five years. You're going to thank yourself. Right. Well, that also brings us back to the discussion of Citadel paint versus speed paint. Right. Um, Army painter, which makes speed paint mm -hmm. is sort of notorious for changing their formulas. I've bought the same color from Speed uh, from uh, Army um, Painter yeah. a number of times, and the colors have not matched, right? Um, and Citadel, you found consistent or fairly consistent. They're a big enough company that I think they have enough stock, right? That because um, it's so expensive, they haven't gotten through it. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> that might be it. But anyway, um, all of this is going to be subjective to to everybody's experience, mm -hmm. right? Um, anyway, speed paint less expensive, so it'll be a little bit more expensive. Yeah. That's only the real difference we're going to be dealing with here. Cool. Cool. Uh, you decided on your first thing. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. You have some water? I got some water. There's your paintbrush. Yeah. I'll get a paintbrush and I'll paint alongside you. Yeah, do it. And do it under the under that thing so that we can have a bit of a close-up. Well, I learned to open this like <laughs> the professional... That I am. Oh, before you open it, Chris, okay. we're going to have to do a montage. I've got a paintbrush now. You ready for a montage? Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen at home, if you're uh, not used to dealing with painting, I give you the thing you're going to spend 99% of the time <laughs> doing. You ready, Chris? Yeah. Is it closed? Uh, yeah. All right, we're going to shake for like five minutes now. All right. Why are we shaking? I feel very close to you right now. Oh, I believe it. Um, <laughs> why are we shaking these paints? Is this the right angle? It doesn't matter. It doesn't right. matter. We just need to agitate the is, paint. Is this, um, are you feeling agitated? Yes. <laughs> the reason we're agitating the paint is... Is I, this, is this... Okay, sorry. I'll stop talking. <laughs> so I'll stop talking. I'm ruining the mood. So the reason we're agitating this paint is because the paint will settle. I told you a minute ago, yep. paint's made out of medium water and pigment. Uh, yeah, and I absorbed all of that information. The pigment will settle. The water will rise to the surface right. and the medium will be in the middle. You don't want to get, you want to get them mixed up properly. Yeah. There are people really want to just get it. who paint a lot, who have a little mixing thing and it vibrates on their table and they press their, their minute, their paint pot onto That's it. That's what those are for. And it goes, and usually oh. you get them for like makeup and like nail yeah. polish and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't paint often enough. You, you paint all the time. I paint all the time. <laughs> but if I have shaken this up yesterday. Right. I don't need to shake it for quite as long today. I see. Got you? Well, yeah. <laughs> sometimes you have to shake it longer. Listen, so, if you shake too much, kids, 
uh, you're gonna find that your 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 endurance decreases. Uh, let's. <laughs> All right, that should probably be okay. All right. Um, with these Citadel bottles, if you see a lighter color on the bottom, you need to shake more. Mm. But it looks pretty well mixed in. All right. Cool. So you're gonna take your model. Yeah. You're gonna open your little container. All right, I'm opening it. You see, oh, it should hang open there, and you have a little pallet on these Citadel bottles. Yeah. Okay. Is that under your uh, your B-roll there? Oh, B-roll cam. You know what? Okay. Because I can also bring this around. I feel. No, that's all right. So I'm gonna open your bottle. Yeah. And these Citadel pots. They're a little annoying and fiddly, but they got a little palette inside if you want to paint just from that. Oh, just this top part? Yeah. Cool. Um, and it sort of gets loaded up when you uh, when you uh, when you shake the bottle. So you want to get your your brush nice and wet. Your brush your brush gets wet first. Oh, brush gets wet step, constantly. Step one. Step one and step two and step ninety seven. Wet that brush. Whenever you don't know whether you you should wet your brush, wet your brush. Mm. Right. The more water you have, the better the paint's going to flow. Okay. Um, Is that just for this contrast paint or just in all, general? You don't need to really do this for for contrast paint. Because contrast paint is thin to begin with. Oh, gotcha. But it's a good habit to be in. Right. It will not hurt the contrast paint. Right. And when you're painting with any paint, you want that paint to be thin. Right. You don't want it to be gloopy. When it dries on your model, you don't want big yeah. globs. Because yeah. you never get them off. Right. Um, you can never thin your paint too much. If you think you're thinning your paint too much, you're not. Yeah. Um, you need a lot of water to break paint. Cool. Cool. So uh, we're just painting on paper. We should have palettes. But it will be fine just to make a little little well of paint on your on your paper here. Okay, that's what I'm doing now too. Oh, cool. look at this blue. I know, Chris, it's my favorite blue. I need to. You haven't even put it on a model yet. I haven't. It's, it's, it's an awesome blue. <laughs> look at that blue. Well, you probably can't see it. Don't worry, well, you know when they'll see it, Chris? At the end. After your beautiful paint job. That's true. Okay, so you have your paint. You have your model. Uh, you're just gonna start slopping it on. And don't worry about being careful, Chris. Okay. You might say, hey, Zach, what's the what's the technique here? We're using contrast paint. These models are already primed. You should be able to just slop it on. Slop it on thick. Slop it on nasty. We're, we're uh, you know, we... Uh, that's, what I've, that's what I've heard. After you shake it, you slop it on thick and nasty. Yeah, don't worry. We'll, we'll do the cleanup after. Whoa, this color's awesome. It is awesome. Now, do you see, Chris? Yeah. I probably don't have a great example of it because I'm painting brown. Uh, do you want do you want me to me to come into that? Oh yeah, sure. You, you know what? We'll... Cool. Yeah. So you see how it's it's you, you're um come a little bit further this yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see how it, you've already got some definition around your feathers and stuff stuff like that. Uh huh. Yeah. That's that's great. Um. So you want to come in with a little bit more water. You don't okay. need more paint. A little bit more water and spread that paint you've already got in there a little thinner. Okay. And just sort of push it around. You should be able to get that over, oh, over yeah. like half of your model. Yeah, you? yeah. You see how your contrast is going up now? Yeah. Right? Because uh, the, the contrast paint, speed paints, they uh, they create their shadow effect by being thicker in the in the crevices. Yeah. So you want to sort of spread it off of the higher raised areas. If I'm going to bring this, this camera around. Yeah, okay. totally. Do it. All right. And never be afraid of slopping it on thick and then thinning it out to what you, you prefer with, with, more, with more water. Yeah. yeah. Just putting the water on it is just like bananas. Right? So like, you never want to be afraid of going too thin. If you've gone too thin, you can always come back with more paint. But yeah. If you've gone too thick, uh, you can't remove paint so easily. Right. So I'm done my little guy. He's uh -huh. covered with paint. I'm just going to let leave him to dry now. Well, what do you think about mine, my proportions right now? You're doing fine. I think what you need to learn, Chris, yeah. is recklessness. <laughs> I want more I think I, need my, I think I need my this. <laughs> yeah? I think I need this. If you want more um, stick tack, I think I've got it. No, I feel good about this. Yeah? All right, so more slopping. More slopping. Slop. Go right at that thing. I got water. Yeah, like all of a sudden pop, the feathers have detail. Yeah. And they didn't before. And they that didn't did, before. That, oh, where's the camera? I guess there's no camera. Well, it's over oh, here. Oh, cool, cool. Oh, yeah, schlop. And it's such, oh, I love that blue. It's such it's like a... such a good blue. 
it's it's just like so deep in the deeps and then so light and airy in the lights. Yeah. It's uh it's got some it's got some wild contrast for a paint called contrast paint. Look at that. <laughs> Who might have thought this? I'm slopping it. Yeah, schlop. I'm not schlopping that much. I'm not reckless. I know you said be reckless, and I'm definitely not being yeah, reckless. Yeah, you're, you're being... Uh, I'm being incredibly, incredibly yeah, you hesitant. You know what? Stop using the palette, Chris. That brush, go right into the pot. Go right into the pot. I want you to get paint on that brush. Oh, I'm scared. Now schlop. Now schlop. That's too much paint, but that's fine. Ah. Keep schlopping. Schlop. No, you said it was too much. Schlop, 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 schlop. You said it was too much. Don't stop schlopping, Chris. Oh. We can fix the problems later. Oh. Right? We're teaching your audience, you know what? There's literally nothing to be afraid of. That's true. You don't know what you're doing. You're terrified. Yeah. You're slapping paint on it. You're using too much paint. Your, your, your brush control is terrible. But you know what? <laughs> that model's looking good. <laughs> but you know what? That model is looking good. I think you're right, Zach. <laughs> I've swapped this all over. Yeah. Now you don't want to. You don't want to do too many layers. Yeah. Because I'm starting to do more layers because I've gone back to it. Yes. So you you don't want to do too many layers. You just want to hit the spots that you haven't put paint on before. Yeah. Right. And if if uh, and so that's why I'm putting water on it. Yeah. Yeah. You can spread it out to those wing tips. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this looks good. It looks very good. Um, and then the other thing to just to know about is like when you get better at it you'll start putting more paint on the bottom of the miniature and less on the top. Right. Right, and that'll help you get that shadow Well, I did put a lot on the bottom. You did put a lot on the bottom. Because you told me to slop, and that was where I was. Right, now I would just get that other other wing tip. Uh, no, the other side. Over here. Uh, yeah, just the very tip tippies of, of the fingies. There you go. And then I think you're, you're pretty much done. You just need to uh, let it dry. Are there any areas that you see no paint? No. What about this? I just push it down. Yeah. You move it around, push shake it, it around. Um, and now what this is also going to teach you, just playing around with water and pushing it around on your model, yeah. is when you're using thicker paint, right, um, just how to, how, to, how to move that around on your model. Because when you're using a thicker paint that's less see-through, mm -hmm. you need to learn how to move it around the model. You can, get your, your, you can get your reps in by using a thinner paint, like a contrast paint or a speed paint. I'm trying to get it to focus. There we go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there you go. That's cool. Sorry, it's not focused. Yeah, no, it's great. Cool. Backs really well. You, you knew what you were doing at the back. It's a little sloppy at the front, but that's fine. <laughs> 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 yeah, but we're only going to see the back because it's going to be running away in right. fear. The other thing you got to remember with these miniatures, while you're getting a little afraid of them, here, I'll bring my, I'll bring yours over. mine over. And again, Nothing super it's fancy over here at all. Smaller model and brown is just kind of dull. But that's great. It looks cool. It does look cool. He looks more alive already. Mm -hmm. And putting them beside each other, there's no mistake. There's no mistaking. Yeah. Um, Whereas the, the other time, we would have mistaken we because of those wings. We could have. Um, the other thing to know is, hey, you're, 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 you're playing with fire here. You don't want to reduce the value of your, your board game if you want to resell it or whatever. I don't think this does reduce the value of it no. um, at all. And 90% of the time, you're going to be looking at these models from the top down anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, you, you take it a, a, exactly as far as you want to to make yourself happy. Yeah. Yeah. Those look good. They look very good. How long did that take us, Chris? <laughs> um, like, maybe you spent a minute painting that. Yeah, it, two, two minutes max. Two minutes max, and we were talking the whole and time. It's because I was talking, and because I was hesitant, and because it is, as my character is, the very first... Uh, thing I've ever painted ever <laughs> because it's the character that I'm doing mm. totally a character yeah so we're gonna do another thing while we have the camera over on this side of the table um this is one of the little boss mobs right mm -hmm. uh Chris wanted to put a an accent color on the boss mobs so they stand out yeah because they're slightly different There's, even though they don't matter being different at all they because, don't matter at yeah, all you don't actually need to use them. so I painted this model in red and then I went and I gave it a yellow dry brush as an accent and so I'm going to teach Chris how to do this now. <laughs> cool. So Chris, take a red mini. But but I don't want to dry brush this one then. Why not? Well, if it's not the boss. Well, I already dry brushed the dog a little more. All right, so I definitely <laughs> got to do it. Cool. That's better. Better. Oh yeah, because that that's a good point. See what just happened there? That's so it doesn't dry out. Yeah. So it doesn't dry out. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I knew that. Cool. So, what we have here, Chris, 
are makeup brushes from the dollar store. Nice. They cost me a dollar. Each? No, for the whole package. Wow. So we are going to uh, use them. Grab the big fluffy one that you're about to grab. This one? That one right there. I see. I knew. <laughs> I'm going to make a little pool of yellow right here. All right. Okay, that little dot. Do you see it? Yeah. Beautiful. Take your dry brush, yeah. your makeup brush. I'm doing it. And get a little bit of that paint in it. Without wetting? Without wetting. We're not going to... You know why it's called dry brushing, Chris? Because there's no wet. There's no wet. Yeah. If you wet this brush, it it's ruined. Okay. <laughs> cool. Get it in there. Just really just get it all up in there? Yeah, one second. Here, I'll show you. Yeah, you show me. Okay, so you're going to take this paintbrush. You're going to get some of this paint. And then I'm just going to swirl it. Uh -huh. I'm almost going to get all of this paint off my brush. But not, not all. Not, right? So it's a little dry, a little tacky. Yeah. Now, before that completely dries out, take your Mont Mini. Yeah. And I'm... from the top down, yeah. brush down. And all of a sudden, he's on fire. He's on fire! Right? Be fast and loose with it, Chris. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> this looks good. <laughs> Zero effort. This looks really good. Get the back of them. Yeah. Don't you don't need to go all the way down to the bottom? Yeah. I don't because I just want his little flames. Yeah, you just want his little flames? Oh, I got it. Did you see what I just did there? Did you see what I just did there? <laughs> I noticed that there were little flames on his butt, and so I just did a little, a little tiny little brush. Chris, you know what that's called? That, that might be called dry brushing. That, that, that's called painting, Chris. <laughs> you have made a decision while putting paint on a thing. <laughs> you are an artist now. I'm an artist. That's it. Do you want to do another one? You yeah. Still paint on your brush. Go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm fucking killing it. Go. Fly fast. Look at that. Be rough with it. I'm being rough. And remember, only drip brush from the top down because oh, yeah. you only want it on the top. You don't want to drip brush up. Yeah. You're just catching the tips of things that you want to catch. Ah. Look at that. You're done. Look at that. You got another one. Go. Oh my God! Look at it. We got another one. In real time, Chris is going to paint five minis. This is the best, this is the best <laughs> fucking day of my life. Right. Um, most models are going to be designed with the idea that someone's going to be painting them. Right? Um, a lot of models, especially come on miniatures, I find. Yeah. Really easy to paint. The areas that are raised are the areas you want to get light colors on, and it looks good. Right? Yeah. Someone, when they built this, thought a little bit about, hey, how are people going to paint this? And uh, it's obvious, like, it's so easy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think a good miniature company will meet you halfway. You ready? Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Start the timer. One, two. Oh, I was looking at the camera, not at the, at the mini. It's harder to, when you do that. Even that one, even this one, like four four things in. We put a lot of paint in this brush, and even though we worked most of the paint out, yeah, like we, the thing that's useful is not the wet paint; it is the dry paint, yeah, or the drying paint, right? And when I want to dry brush a lot of things, I go at it with a little bit more energy than you are <laughs> in order to in order to get through it all before the paint completely dries on my right, brush, right? Because I don't want to ruin the brush, yeah. But if you want to just keep dry brushing like that. You'll keep getting you'll keep getting a pretty good result. Yeah. Um, if you want a more subtle result, you work more paint out of your brush before you Beforehand. start dry brushing, and you're done. You did an entire squad just right there, Chris. Wow. That you're done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check that shit out. <laughs> oh, let me just get him to do it up. I bet no one can even know which one you did <laughs> versus which one I did. Yeah, I did a couple more details on the ones I did, but. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, I wasn't even showing it. Um, but, yeah, so it, it does not take that much effort. You saw how much effort it takes to put a solid color onto a mini. Yeah. And you saw how absolutely little energy it is to put a secondary dry brush color on. Yeah. And already they look not only more distinct, but they look kind of alive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I kind of hate this little little portion with the brush go. <laughs> you know what yeah. I want. We just get it. Just on, the, on that side from the top. Top down, Zach. Top down. Oh, oh yes, Sensei. <laughs> um, yeah, you can also see. Oh, we don't have uh, too many lights set up here, but yeah. it does the trick. Uh, you can see Zach added in a little, a little bit of white, a couple of little like armor pieces. Yeah. So you can see like the face pops a little bit, 
But that's for that's for not for for painting for dummies. <laughs> this is painting for dummies. And this yeah. and this dummy looks yeah. looks pretty friggin' that's, good. That's that's game ready and that's all you really need. It looks mm. good. It'll stand out. Also, if you do a secondary co color like this, you could do multiple different things in a red and a different accent color. Right. And they'll also stand. And they'll look different. Yeah. Yeah, because if we want to do the demons in red, right? You absolutely can. We just do the demons. We don't add the yellow. We add like an orange or something. Yeah, or you don't add anything. We don't add anything. Yeah. Cool. That dry brushing is actually pretty easy. It's very easy. <laughs> Look at that. Right? I have I have dry brushed entire boxes of games after I've primed it all yeah. and gotten a base color on. Uh, Nemesis, mm. right? I did all of Nemesis in like a ready brown because mm -hmm. they were like, you know, Mars aliens. Yeah. And then I just dry brushed a yellow from the top and a green from the bottom. Done. I was. It took like 10 minutes after I'd based them. Yeah. 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 Instead of paying for sun drop, this is the sort of stuff you can do. Now, it might add up because one of these little balls of paint probably cost mm. you like six or seven bucks. Mm, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. And then you're going to need a spray paint, probably another seven bucks. Yeah. Then you're going to want another paint or dry brush, yeah. another seven bucks. You're going to need some dry brush paint brushes from the dollar store. That's a dollar. Yeah. You're already looking at 22. 22. Yeah. But yeah, so so Awaken Realms because you got you got the them sun drop for the first yeah, Nemesis for the first game because I had never painted the, at that point. You'd never painted at that point. Never. Right. The first thing thing I ever painted, Chris, was your um. Was it Blood Rage? Yeah, Blood Rage. That's so offensive to me. <laughs> it's, it makes me so mad because Zach is just like so good. He's so good. He's like, oh yeah, I remember. I remember talking to you, and you were like, you were like, either, either this is really easy, or I'm, I'm really good at this. And I was like, you're really good at this. Uh, I'll film some Blood Rage, his Blood Rage ones. Like those, are, those I think are some of my favorite sculpts you've ever painted. I think so too. And they were the number it's one. It's also because I was terrified of because when I first talked right. to you about it, yeah. I was like, are you ever gonna paint these? And you were like, I don't want to ruin my game. <laughs> and then you handed them to me to paint, and I was like. <laughs> I'm gonna ruin Chris's game. Our friendship's gonna be over. And I spent so much time on those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fair. Yeah, I think you you must you must have spent so so long on them. I, I spent a good amount of time. Yeah, I'm yeah. just cleaning a brush so it's not ruined. Oh, forever. yeah, that's true. Slop it. Yeah. Wow, that's really easy. It's super easy from just a simple wash. From the from, from the prime, from the prime, to a wash, to like throwing a little bit of accents on it, that's really like simple to do. I'll, I'll probably we'll just set up this camera and we're just gonna go through and we're gonna paint paint some of this stuff and hang out and maybe I'll cut together something like a super cut, super cut, and then we'll show you the results at the end as well of uh, of all the stuff that we kind of get through. But using all of this technique, there's no no other like. Major technique to go over, and if there is, well, then I will will say, "Hey, put this in," and then I'll put it in. <laughs> I, I think I, I think I've hit on the simplest yeah. simplest approach. Honestly, I was scared. I was okay. I was scared of the of the spray paint. Yeah. So the spray paint really scared me, and I think this the spray paint would deter me mm -hmm. from ever doing this myself. <laughs> right. But like getting to the table and actually doing it here. That really has filled me with confidence now, of, it, of like what you can do. As a response to that, if you are afraid of spray paint, mm -hmm. um, you know how you put paint on this little guy. Mm -hmm. You do the exact same thing with a non-see-through paint. Right. Just and so that's how you, that you can prime, you prime it with it. a brush, right? If you get like a light gray or a light white, you mm -hmm. make sure you're thinning your paints with water. You want, yes. to, you want to put a too thick layer as your prime. Mm -hmm. You get it all over the model, just like you watch Chris do. Yeah. That's it. You don't need to touch a spray paint bottle. Um, simple. It's very simple. simple. It's, it's very like, simple. Like many. And then, and then when you get to the point where you're like, oh, why am I priming these by hand? Then you sticky tack over and you spray paint them, and then you can just bang them out. Right. Because spray painting is so much easier to like do your In whole. quantity, especially. Yeah. And if you've got a big like zombicide style game. Yeah. Right? Where you're not just dealing with like six minis but you're dealing with a whole friggin' whack of something and you just want to get to the fun part because like the actual putting color on it and seeing the detail pop out, that's it, the fun part. It's kind of a joy. Every time you do a little thing, a, uh -huh. like, like many different art, artistic endeavors, yeah. painting is, also, is, is just a series of simple steps, right? Yeah. Um, 
And usually the first couple steps have the biggest impact. Yeah. Right? Throw one color on a model, it is transformed. Throw a secondary uh, color onto the model, transformed again. When you get to like really high level painting for competitions and things like that, mm -hmm. the thing that is differentiating them from you and me is they're doing more oh, steps. They're just doing more steps. Yeah. They're not doing more complicated things. Right. They're not, they're not, they don't have secret knowledge. They're just spending more time, right? Mm. And every step you do makes a smaller change to the model, right? As I start, if I was going to keep painting these and keep adding detail, there'd be a point where I would, I would spend an hour do, working on like a, a, a transition or something like that. And you would almost not be able to tell. Right. Right. And the people that take it to that absurd level you see on Instagram or Reddit. Yeah. They're doing a thousand little sketch steps that no one bothers to do. They're not better than you. Yeah. They just have more time. They just have more time. <laughs> um, yeah. So don't never be afraid of doing a, a something like this because it's inevitably just a bunch of simple steps. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's uh, cut ahead and soon you'll be, uh, you'll be making um models and painting models that uh well that kind of look like this <laughs> feel like one of those instagram models at a dinner place yeah <laughs> <laughs> get that light up in there well we can pull them off the shelf after or something yeah. too yeah, you know what we can we can probably bring them down to the well lit area yeah this is this well that was a good one <laughs> yeah we'll bring them down you know what that's for the end we'll bring them down to the well lit area and we'll do a show and tell of all of Zach's stuff ay 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 well it's, it's, they're su they'll be super easy to bang out. yeah I think so I like this as the I think that looks great yeah for the for this color for these guys yeah I think so too right they're, they're like a I little think that looks dude. great for that I agree um Okay, I, I'm really pleased with the little fire guys. They're the little, fire guys look amazing. <laughs> they look great. Man, dry brushing is so easy. Yeah. So easy. I thought you were talented, and now I see you're a hack. <laughs> I am. I am. That little bit at the end, I wasn't lying. <laughs> that was a great, uh, you're a great teacher, Zach. Oh, am I? You are. All right. Uh, all right, what other color? I've made doing? this so blue. Yeah, it's fine. Pushing dried paint into your water. I guess that's what that is yeah, on the side, is. eh? I only use that cup for paint. Oh, okay. Um, Don't worry about it. You can also see, I like this cup. At the bottom, there are some ridges. Mm. So when you want to clean your brush, you go right down to the bottom. Mm. And it's got like, some ridges that'll help you like, get nice. right into the thing. And then I think these slits were supposed to be to help put a tip on your brush, but I never use them. Mm. All right. I'm going to do this one. I'm going for the... What are you doing? I'm doing this guy, which you decide was yellow. Yeah, and then I'm doing this one, which is purple. Yeah, cool. Oh, I should turn the uh, viewfinder around for framing. Uh, oh, I didn't realize we were still filming. Yeah, well, I just I stopped and I started. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if there's anything that like that's it, yeah, we want, it. or we can, or I'll just like fucking time lapse it. Yeah. Hey, add this to the, add this to our shaking montage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mixologists over here. Okay. I'm going to take both of these up. I'm going to see which one of these two yellows I like better. Nice. All right. So this is a little squirt squirt. A little squirt squirt. So where do I squirt it? On the paper? Just on the paper. That's why I put paper in. The paper will absorb it a bit. And so usually I would use like a plastic thing, but this will be fine. You sure? Yeah. All right. So I just take it. It just means we're going to be a little less efficient with the paint. And then we just slop it. Yeah. Now, yeah. Mm, something I should have said earlier, because now we're using speed paint. We used contrast paint before. Mm -hmm. Speed paint is uh, doesn't get along super well with water. Ah, so right? I shouldn't have just dipped back into water. You can dip back into the water. Uh, just know that it's going to take off much more of the paint. Right. With speed paint than with contrast paint. After speed paint's dried, um, I think they fixed this in the current formulation of speed paint, but these are older speed paints. Mm -hmm. um, you can you can almost wash a, a model clean of paint with water after it's dried. When it's dried. Paint. Yeah, with, with this particular speed paint. I believe oh, wow. they fixed that since. Um, but that's not a bad thing because you can also use this speed paint. Um, you can use water to like, just like you can paint by adding color, mm -hmm. you can paint by removing color. Right, so you can actually do some really fun things by pulling paint off of a surface mm. 
Um, I kind of like that you can do that with speed paint. Um, it just means sometimes I, I, I will use a, um, a varnish to seal it afterwards to make mm. sure no, no more paint comes off. But I've painted a bunch of your stuff with a speed paint. I haven't varnished it and you haven't noticed. So Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I find even with like the rising, I don't know if I really like varnishes mm -hmm. because like even with the rising sun ones, I know you put a varnish like a sealer on a lot of those, yeah. right? And I found that it, it for a while made them a bit sticky. Yeah. Well, what happened there was, again, first time I'd ever painted anything, Chris. <laughs> oh, second time. I did rising sun after um, yeah, Blood Rage. Blood Rage. Um, I know a noticeable dip in yeah, quality. I what do you? I'm kidding. <laughs> Went from three models to thirty-five models. He's going to complain about difference in quality. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, Your freaking panda in the Rising Sun one. That one. That's my one panda of my annoyed me so much. The panda in the Rising Sun one, I painted like three different times, and I kept redoing it. I'd be like, what's what am I doing wrong? It looks bad every time. And I realized afterwards I was reversing because I had, I was arrogant and I didn't look up a picture of a panda and I had reversed, <laughs> I had reversed the, the white and the black. And every time I painted, I was like, something's wrong. I've painted it poorly. What's, <laughs> what's, what have I done? Um, and it was just, I had made the black bits white and the white bits black. Yeah. And when I did that properly, he looked great, beautiful. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, what was I saying? What was I saying? Um, I was saying something. Oh yeah. Varnish. Um, I was, that was, oh yeah, we're talking about varnish because yeah, because yeah, it was a bit sticky. It was a bit uh, sticky. So I had gone to a, an artist store yeah. and I had got an artist quality varnish right. for like oil paints and stuff right, like that. Right. Um, and obviously uh, that varnish wasn't formulated with the idea that people are going to be touching, touching yeah. oil paintings. Well, I mean, they, <laughs> it, it should be. Every piece of art that I see, I just touch. Well, also the other thing about artist quality varnish is is they're made to be removed. Look at that one. That looks great. He looks beautiful. With the purple? Yeah. I love the purple. I like how he's dark. The purple sort of reads like metal on the metal bits. Yeah. It kind of reads like... Rotting flesh. Yeah, it, it does, it's doing a lot of work. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's weird. Because like just when it spreads out, it's a different color. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes you'll find out that... Oranges are just yellows that are uh, <laughs> <laughs> that are more saturated. <laughs> that are more saturated. That are more saturated. <laughs> right, and so um, yeah, that, that can be a thing you discover. This also might look a little different when it's uh, when it's dry. Yeah, I just want to get the, get a little bit of this now. Yeah, yeah, because you see those little blotchy blotchy parts. Yeah, and then like this is when the purple ones just painted. Yeah. And like that's another thing just to be aware of when you're doing test models, like we're doing test models right now. Mm -hmm. um, they might the color quality might change quite a bit after it's dry, right? And so that's part of why you do it. Yeah. Like this guy, he's lightened up quite Ooh, a bit. Oh, he has lightened up. Yeah. Since I, I still him. I still like him. I agree as well. Ooh, but like, you, the back looks so cool. The back looks fantastic. It's because there's more detail on the front, so there's right. more places the paint sunk into. Uh -huh. There's less on the back, so you got a thinner... Wow. Right? So if I had watered it down more on the front, I would have gotten more of that Well, we'll, well we know for the next ones yeah. to do, right? This is why you do tests. Yeah. <laughs> right? A little bit here. Can I... Yeah, I love the back on that. Yeah, but the front is a little bit muddier. It's a bit darker, yeah. Right? Um, but it's also darker just because there's more natural shadow with yeah. the model as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too, because he's hunched over, mm -hmm. right? Cool. How this this one's coming out really just exactly the same. Basically, yeah. Oh, That's it looks such so a good. great blue. I think you used that on the um whatever clan of blood rage, yeah? yeah. You would have, yeah, because yeah. it looks very familiar. Like look look at the friggin' detail on the wings. It pops completely out. Yeah. This is something that like gray models never no would never get. <laughs> right? And like the detail's all there. We haven't added any. Mm -hmm. We've just you just made it put more one thing where it's just like just a little yeah that's so cool it's wild yeah okay cool so we have our test for these cool and you know what we're gonna do i'm gonna i'm gonna try this oh, other on yellow, a different one yeah and we'll see yeah which you prefer they'll still they'll still look they'll the still same, be the same right? who cares yeah um okay i'm gonna try this the snakeys i guess or whatever you can try a little chair Ooh, the chair okay great now that speed paint bottles come with a little metal ball inside, or a little glass ball, I think. 
Because I think a metal not ball. Not similar color. Felt like there was something in there. No, that's just that's just the weight of the paint sloshing oh. around. But uh, there's a little mixer ball. I think a little glass bead in the uh, speed paint bottles. Nice. And then you know, if you go to a hobby store, they'll try to sell you mixing balls for money, money, money. But you know, you can go to the hardware store and get like little, little ball bearings. They're usually okay as long as they're stainless. If they're if they're like iron or something like that, they'll rust, and that'll be a bad yeah. Day. That'll be a bad day, guys. I don't know if you know out there in the world. <laughs> I'm cutting this. <laughs> Whatever you say next, I'm not making the final cut. Chris does an absurd amount of work. You see, look at this yellow. Oh yeah, that's the totally that's different. The, that's the yellow. That's the yellow. That's the yellow. For right, sure. it's got a pukiness to it. Yeah, yeah, I gotta take that. Uh, yeah, well. So this is this is why you do test mods. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the pukiness of it looks so good. Right, and like this has got more of a browny yellow, uh -huh. and this is a more reddy yellow. Yeah, uh, I don't know. They both look fun. Like the little the the. the you see where the axe is hitting the the ground? It kind of looks like a pool of blood, a yeah. little there because of like because of the redness because of the redness. So yeah. I, I actually don't know. Like my my instinct was the pukey, yeah, because it's more like putrid, right? Right. Well, the, the, this is more naturalistic, right? If we yeah. were gonna if we were gonna do a naturalistic paint job, yeah, I think I think this would do a lot of work. I for think us. in real life, like I think in the phone, it's also picking up a nicer, yeah, than it's a, it's than a higher in real life. Uh, higher saturation, yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm, I, I'm, I think I'm pleasantly surprised how concisely we got through all of that information. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's, I mean, I'm interested. I guess I'll move on to the next one. All right. I got distracted. <laughs> I'm try with this. And like, I like how a little goes a long way. And so for this, well, I should clean my brush, right? You should clean, clean your it. brush. Okay. But then I should dry it before getting then You this don't need to worry thing. about drying it, no. The only, the only reason I was drying these ones off is because dry brushes only work when they're dry. Right, right. Well, I thought because of this, um, this one being... Uh, being a... a I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> don't even know. I was, was going to say something about it being a speed paint. Oh, probably because of being a speed paint and not... Um, no, you're right. And not, like, not you're not supposed to put... If you want to try a different flesh tone, that's a great one. Yeah? Yeah. I think I should. Um, I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. It's not bad. No. It, it oh. is, uh, it's definitely more fleshy than pink. Yeah. Is that one's more pink? N no. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It depends on what you're looking for. Well, we can always highlight it. Mm -hmm. You know what? We just dry brush it with pink. Yeah. Because I know what dry brushing is and how easy it is now. It is. It is. It is. That's fun. Yeah. What do we think about this little Cupid, eh? I don't know. I, I quite like his... Uh, we'll see what he looks like when he's dried. Yeah. I like his... Definitely on his, on his skin bits, it looks quite good. Mm-hmm. And then we can just dry brush something else onto it, maybe. Mm -hmm. Like a white or something, maybe. Yeah, that's the only one where I'm just like, oh, it doesn't pop that much. Yeah. Or it doesn't, like, give the vibe of Cupid. But also... We can, we can do some... I just don't know if those two are going to be too too similar. Yeah. Feels like they might be. Feels like they might be. So you want something maybe a little... Uh... That's a nice... I like that green. Yeah. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it's a, it's a very cartoonish... Yeah, green. I like which, how saturated it is. Yeah, I'm completely fine with that in terms of. Uh, yeah, but like this is, we're getting into a little maybe too many naturalistic colors. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna do this the bone, the white, the white one. Now, if we're, do you, like this one, do you think that'll work or no? So maybe we usually because this is so this is uh, contrast white. Oh, so we want to be contrast. So it wants to be on something. So what you do is you paint your model. Like bright, black. bright, bright white. Mm. And then this is actually a gray. Like if you look at it, mm. it's a gray, not a white. Yeah, yeah. And so when you put it on a bright, bright white model, the shadow of white is gray. Mm. Right? I but see. if we're going to put it on gray already, I think it might oh, do okay, nothing. Might, not, might do nothing? Okay, cool. Literally do nothing. Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't have to do that then. Yeah. Uh, give me three seconds. I'll yeah, finish yeah. painting this one. I'm gonna, I was just looking for a, uh, an alternate to that one before we got there. No, that's fine. Do I have something else that I can start with? Because I think we're, because we only have the gargoyles, which you want to do something different with, right, too? 
Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. This can also just be friggin' something else. Yeah, one second. Let me just finish getting mm -hmm. paint on this boy, girl, lady. Cool. What bomb? You see, I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. These Love two, that. like, and I like this is, yeah. I think I, as a whole, uh -huh. I like this better just because yeah. it stands out from this and this. I think, yeah, I think you're right. Even though that's like, that's not, that's nicer. I think it like makes more things pop. Right. I, I think, think this, this gives it more character. More character, yeah. especially because what we're doing this for. Yeah. Yeah. I think if we were doing like a full paint job and uh -huh. we're coming in here with more colors, yeah. this is a great this starting point. a great point. color. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Give me three seconds. All right. Grab a grab a chair we haven't played with yet. <laughs> if you can find one. Good question. There we go. Okay. This is a this is a paint we haven't played with yet. Mm. So this is an ink. Um, so not an acrylic paint. Well, it's an acrylic ink. Should I get the camera? No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just gotta really get this shaken up, or else it'll be yeah. a sludge. Yeah. All right, let's give this a go. Okay. The turquoise is what we used, right? The pterodon. Yeah, the pterodon turquoise. All right, let's try this. Hardened leather. That might work on this. I know, because we're having a little, a little bit of an issue with too many browns, right? Mm-hmm. That's a gorgeous color. Yeah. That's the color. Inks are flipping... Great, and it's going to be different enough from that pink over there. Oh right? yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's like a magenta. Yeah. And again, this is not a contrast paint, so this is this is not see through in the same way the other paints we've been play playing with. But I'm making sure to water it down a lot to uh, to make and just to, using to that try to get that there, effect. Right. Yeah. Um, by just getting water on your brush. By just getting water on my brush. Inks are sort of naturally a little thin anyway. Um, I could use a, a medium. So like I said earlier, paint is a pigment, mm -hmm. a medium, and, and usually water. Um, we, you, you can get, I have bottles of just medium, so you can cut it with medium instead of paint, mm -hmm. or um, instead of water. And where's that paint bottle that you were Oh, yeah. This one? So I was just using uh, acrylic inks. These you will not get at a miniature store. Mm. These are these are artist quality. So this little daub of paint or this little daub of ink I put mm -hmm. there, you could probably paint a whole painting. Right. Like it's ink. It's like super concentrated. Wow. The pigment in it is like crazy. Uh, you can spread it out forever. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but I put it on paper so the paper's absorbed it <laughs> uh, instead of a palette. So a couple issues there. <laughs> right. But we're we're playing fast and loose, and it doesn't matter. I bought this bottle like six years ago and I haven't run out. It's not even close <laughs> to running out. Right? That that's another thing. If you get if you're painting a lot and you have like I think I think all these contrast paints. Yeah. I first bought them when I started painting your rising sun. Right. It's been like five years since then. Yeah. And like they're still more than half full. Yeah. Right? You're never using that many paint much paint. We've painted a lot already. We've just used like mm -hmm. little drops. Yeah. Right. But anyway. <laughs> Right. Cool. Our angel. Let's see what we're going to do. Yeah, this drawing isn't so bad, eh? But it is very similar to that. It is similar to that. And that's so and much And it's just nicer. so much nicer. So much nicer. Yeah, it's yeah. like pomegranate. Yeah, yeah, it's just beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what we can do, because we're, we're just, now we're just having a tour of paint. Yeah. Which one is this? I don't know. What kind of, if we're going to paint him a metallic color, are you thinking brass, silver, gold? I would think silver. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's, he's holding a sword. He's like that angel that's, like, the angels are, are very, like, silver armor. Yeah. This is my, this is, I want you to be filming over there. Yes, okay. Yeah, we're still filming. This, Vallejo acrylic metal color. This is the best metallic paint you will ever find in your life. <laughs> it is so good. I love this paint. Yeah. So like, if you've if you've been painting miniatures, you will you will you will have like every kit of paints you'll ever get will have a gold mm -hmm. or a silver or whatever or, or iron color in them. Mm -hmm. They'll suck because the, the way the way you get the, the way you get paint to look like metal. Yeah. 
is it has to have metal shavings in it. Right. Right? Little flecks of metallic. So lead-based paints are good. <laughs> You've heard it here first. Anyway, it's really hard to get little flakes of metal that reflect gold or brass mm. or silver yeah. without being like a grainy texture on the model. Mm -hmm. Right? So you'll find some, and the color is nice, but if you look at it, it is... It's bedazzled, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, this is the, we're gonna see this in a second. It's the smoothest flipping paint I've ever seen in my life. The only um, thing it never, um, it is an airbrush color, but I think it has cadmium in it. So if you were to, do you know what cadmium no. is? Okay, cadmium is a heavy metal. Yeah. Um, it's in a lot of artist quality paint. Cadmium, not dangerous at all. Uh, you don't want to get it on your skin because you you can absorb the heavy metal, give yourself cadmium poisoning. Yeah, so but you, not dangerous. Not <laughs> it, once it's dry, you're fine. Gotcha. You don't want to splash it all over your hand, and a little bit's not going to hurt you at all. Yeah, you'd need a lot of cadmium. Yeah. all over your arm to get cadmium poisoning. It's like that time where you and I took a nice uh, bath <laughs> in together. cadmium, in cadmium, in cadmium yeah. yellow paint. Um, but yeah. anyway, cadmium does give like a. Great but it was a good bonding experience. Yeah. Um, the thing is. If you're airbrushing, you're spraying the paint into the air, and then breathing in cadmium is a big no-no. Hmm. Gotcha. So it is a it is an uh, airbrush paint, but if you're ever going to airbrush with it, uh, I don't know if this has cadmium in it, but I'm pretty sure it does because it's it's a metallic paint. Um, make sure you wear a respirator. <laughs> gotcha. Um, yeah, my, my my sister went to like art school mm -hmm. for like fine art and stuff like that. Yeah. And and she was looking at my paints and she was looking at the backs of them. She was like, "Don't airbrush with this one. <laughs> Don't airbrush with this one. You wear you wear safety equipment, right, Zach?" And I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> but I don't I don't well, you airbrush. Don't, you, I don't airbrush at all. I just you don't brush. have an airbrush, right? I don't. I yeah. don't have an airbrush. Is that something that you would be interested in? No. Why? Oh, okay. We're getting into it. Mm -hmm. Um. So one loud. Right. Two, airbrushing is, if you want a good one, mm -hmm. you need like a very expensive compressor. You need a very expensive airbrush gun. And then I feel like you need to be airbrushing enough stuff. To make it worth to it. To make it worth it. Yeah. I paint a lot. Yeah. But I also, I, I like painting with like a brush. I live in an apartment. If I had an airbrush, I'd want, I'd want to like set up like a, a hood, garage. a ventilator, something like that. Yeah. To like blow... Like, you want to like do a, it in your garage. I want to yeah. do it in my garage. Yeah. Um, I don't have a garage, yeah. so I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to set up a, like, you can set up like window units that have like a suction fan that blows outside, nah. and then you'd huddle in that, that unit. And, that seems like the worst thing in the world. Yeah, I agree. I have a friend who, who also plays Warhammer with mm -hmm. me, and he has... Other Chris. Other Chris. And he's got himself a... Common free. <laughs> he's got himself a marijuana grow tent just for airbrushing inside of. <laughs> And so he gets into that, and it's got like a, a fan built in to vent outside. Right. And so he airbrushes in that thing. And it, I'm like, I went over to his house, and he's just got this like refrigerator sized grow tent <laughs> that he goes into to airbrush. And I'm like, nah. uh, he also 3D prints though. So yeah. 3D printing has a bunch of fumes, and so he'll put his yeah. 3D printer in this grow tent as well. But um, it's a. Uh, I can live without such yeah. a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, a couple times I have. I borrowed his airbrush once, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, this is nice." But I, 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 I get by painting just fine. I like brushes. Mm. Yeah, cool. Cool. Let's play with this paint. Let's do it. Whoa, whoa! It is good. Just like look at how that look at how that just bubbled and dropped down. Oh my god! It is so. It's, this is the thinnest that you play with this, Chris. Yeah. No, I want to. Yeah. I, I just want to film you playing with it. I'll oh, play okay, with it after. Okay. 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 Because I'll paint some stuff after, but I just for the whoa. Yeah, that's what's up. Right, and it's probably going to be hard to pick up on camera just because. No, it's shiny. It's, like the shine's like the up. yeah reflection because we're put we're paint basically painting gray on gray. Oh no! Right. It looks great. I'm not even being careful here. Yeah, that's that's the definition of slopping it up. Yeah. Slop that sloppy stick. This, this paint is so thin and so reflective. Whoa. And I'm I'm Oh, those look so cool. I haven't cut this with anything. Like there's no water in here at all. This is just how thin this paint is. Wow. And And you're just like slopping it on. I'm literally just slopping it on. Yeah. Um you could not do this with uh most other <laughs> metallic paints. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow. Here. Play, Chris. Play. Wow. I just love filming that. <laughs> I like I like filming right. it for the people. Now, this, this paint, I don't know how it's formulated or whatever. Holy shit, that looks so good. I know. That looks it looks so like good. I'm like these are my these, these I'll f all these <laughs> other I mean screw all these other uh these other things. Oh you like your blue? No, screw you. Well, look at that one. That one's coming out anytime there's a mob. I don't even care. It's the number one. It just moved up. Yeah. I didn't even like that sculpt before. And now I'm like, yeah, it's, it's the, kind it's of the, amazing. It's the best thing the, I've ever seen the, in my life. The problem with this paint is yeah, it looks great. We don't actually have a lot of contrast in here. I don't right? Like care. a lot of this detail isn't gonna shine out. Um, we are sort of getting some because the light's reflecting off the higher portions. Yeah. And it's it's, it's highlighting itself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, just with the light. Yeah, just with light. Because normally you would artificially you would artificially disseminate that. One of the big secrets to painting is what you're really doing is you're not painting the color of the thing you're painting. You're painting the light hitting the thing you're painting. Yeah. Right? Um, you know, I think a big mistake people make is, um, like, if you ever see kids doing, like, painting? I've never seen them. Okay. But kids painting at, like, home or, at, like, school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll paint, like, okay, the, the sun is a big yellow circle. Yeah. And the sky is a big blue field. Yeah, yeah. The sky isn't blue. <laughs> like, sometimes it is bluish, mm -hmm. but, like, really it's not. The sun isn't yellow. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Um, you're describing how I would paint a picture, though. No, I know. <laughs> but, like, when you're actually looking at what, what it is and what light's doing to right. stuff, you're painting that, not your not what we've been taught things are, right? right. You tell yourself, oh, yeah, frogs are green, and you, you take a big blob of green paint, and you paint a green frog. Right. But if you look at a frog, a frog's not green, right? You paint a tree. You take some brown. You build a, a paint a, a mm -hmm. pillar. You look at a tree. Like, a tree is gray. So it's got yellows in it. Yeah. Um. You're actually kind of blow, low key blowing my mind <laughs> right now, and I'm just trying to play it cool. For... Right. So, like the, the 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 secret trick, other than going step by step and spending a lot of time when you're painting miniatures, is uh slop some other colors. Slop in Slop some other colors in there, but also you know paint the light, paint the light. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh. I just joined your cult. Zach. <laughs> paint the light, everybody. <laughs> let's let's paint the light. If you. If you're here, they've made this far. Drop, oh. drop paint the light in the comments. Yeah, so I think we, we've done our test case of all of our, our miniatures. Except for the gargoyles. Except for the gargoyles. Let's. I was thinking. One second. There's no way you can you can outdo yourself now. Okay. I think we can. <laughs> well, we're, we're, this is going to be tough. Okay. Shake that. Yeah. Oh, what is this? Model, it's a model color. It's model color uh, ivory. It is a thick paint. So I can barely feel it shake. I know. So something you have to know when you're dealing with white paints is white is a notoriously hard color to make a pigment for. This is don't don't look at me. Don't look at me while I do this, okay? <laughs> you shake that bottle of white creamy <laughs> ivory paint. <laughs> Let me tell you how thick the pigment oh, is in. It's it. real thick. No, I know. It's real so, thick. So uh the thing about I don't even know if I'm doing a good job. You're probably doing fine. But anyway, so uh Thanks for the encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about um the thing about white paint is, in order to get a white pigment, the only ways to do it are to get a very thick grain. Like if all mm -hmm. if all pigments are um, uh, like a powder, a powdered color, yeah, the white is always a very thick powdered color, and so it is a, uh, it's really hard to get a thin, um, a thin white. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking a black, a black ink, and I'm slopping it on. So like our like our. Uh, Cupid ink. Like our Cupid ink. I'm just slopping it on. Slop it up. We're going to let it dry for a second. Okay. And then we're going to give him a dry brush in ivory. Mm. And I think that that will look like stone, but we'll find out. We'll find out. He might look like a little marble boy. <laughs> <laughs> cool. We're just going to give him a half second to dry, and then we'll hit him with a dry brush. Your favorite thing, Chris. My favorite thing. He doesn't look like much now, but he will. Cool. I promise. All right. Well, I oh. trust you on that. Jesus Christ. That I know. A... You heard that? Yeah. <laughs> I think fucking everyone down the street heard that. I saw all the pedestrians walking by. We're like, oh, is that building collapsing? <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Okay. Uh, honestly, my shoulders make the same sound every time I move them. Yeah, it's my neck. My neck. My back. Okay. My pussy and my crack. My neck. 
<laughs> oh, I'm shaking myself, not the paint. That's the that's the okay. opening. So here I've gotten a bunch onto my brush. Mm -hmm. I should be filming this. Oh no, it's too he's still he's too wet still. He's too wet. We'll wait we'll wait until he's drier. But I can already see like your idea. Even though he is he is wet. We'll just live in the world of gray. Yeah, you're kind of just like dragging the uh you're dragging the ink with you a bit. Yeah. No. Now I'm just gonna dab him a bit. He doesn't look great, but he looks a little stony. He looks a little stoned. I don't know, he looks pretty cool to me. Yeah, we might go in with, with a non grayed up white <laughs> yeah. and uh, and give him a proper dry yeah, brush when he's actually see, dry. Yeah, that's that you can see how the ink blended yeah. when that should have been just regular white, like how that, that one was. Here I am rushing because I'm on camera. Well, no, we can I'm gonna cut all this. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm just gonna edit this all together and I'll just rewash it and just cut out some stuff and make it but honestly, we've been talking pretty consistently that I think it's gonna be interesting. You yeah, know? that's why I said I don't know. We're probably going to have a lot to talk about just teaching how to yeah. paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there is one thing I'm looking for. All right. I'm going to start back with the harpies. Oh, okay. Because I feel good about that color. I'm going to do an experiment, Chris. Okay. With our silver boy. Just so we can keep... Well, just just so I feel like this is in my skill set. Yes, yes, do it. And you can experiment and then let me know when I need to... Um, Pay attention. Pay attention and talk to you. Yeah, and, and Phil. God, that silver boy looks so cool. All right, I might ruin him, but we're going to see. That's fine. Honestly, screw you for being so good at this. Wow. I'm putting a patina on him. I do like it. I think I might like the pure silver better, but that's... I think so. But I, I wanted to try to see if I could put something on him that would bring out some of this detail. Uh-huh. It does bring out the detail. It's like a rusted. Yeah. I still... I think it's pretty cool. I mean, we look on the back versus the front. Yeah. I think I like pure silver better. Yeah. I'll finish him up just so while I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got him going. We can have one that's like that. Yeah. And we just keep the rest pure silver. And that's also a good thing, too, right? Like... Uh, I think there's there's um, the the ability to become like super precious with these things, right? Like I'm I'm not uh, precious. I've been selling you to slot uh, stuff all night. I know, I know, but that's that's <laughs> a, that's the thing, right? Like you can become super precious, but like even just looking at them with paint, I'm like, I yeah, I'm fine if that one doesn't match. Doesn't match. Like I don't care enough to go back and to reprime it and to cover that up and redo silver over them. I don't care, right? Like I, I don't care whatsoever mm -hmm. uh, about that. And I think, I think that's a good. I think that's a very healthy mentality to like remind yourself of that. Literally, any paint is going to be better than gray. Like literally, any paint yeah. is going to be better than gray. And 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 I'm always like, oh, what if I ruin the models? I'm like, well, I don't really particularly like the gray models. And the thing as is, they are. I'm just like. When you have gray models, they have all this detail on them that you're not seeing. Mm -hmm. And if you paint, and you paint badly, yeah. if you're worse than Chris ever was in his worst nightmare, yeah. and you paint badly and you glob that paint on, you know what the damage is? You don't see the detail you weren't seeing anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what have you lost? Um, Other than a little bit of time. A little bit of time. Yeah. And you know what? Learning that I could paint miniatures mm -hmm. turned... Is this my brush? Uh, probably. Yes. Turned all of the boxes of miniatures on my shelf yeah. into wonderful ways to spend my time. Yeah. Um, which was kind of wonderfully exciting. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, when you suddenly realize... And like, all the boxes on my shelf. All the boxes on his shelf. wonderful ways to spend his time. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, it's, it's lovely to discover you your, your hobby is expandable. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Without... Without an extraordinary effort, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't need to buy another 20 Kickstarters to yeah. give myself a bunch of stuff to, to play with. I mean, you could. Well, I, well <laughs> the real reason I don't need to buy another 20 Kickstarters, Chris, is because you're going to get 20 Kickstarters. That's true, yeah. And uh, and then desperately come to my door being like, Please, we need to play these. <laughs> little pig, little pig, let me come in. <laughs> I need to review. <laughs> Everyone's waiting. I need to just take your own uh, thoughts and... Uh, and pretend that they're mine and just say them on camera. 
<laughs> really, everything I've said is just Zach's opinion. Yeah? Yeah. With really? Massive Darkness being the best and better than Zombicide, that's uh, Zach's opinion. Oh, wow. Um, where's, uh, where's that little box of miniatures that we brought out with ourselves that we did in Prime? Um, that's on the bench over there. Yeah, I'll put it back. I honestly didn't expect this we'd, we'd be going this long. I thought we'd get a couple sample models. No! Well, well, I'm not going to leave you. Now, it's, I see that it's so much work. And now it's that not I, that much work. I know how to do it now. But like, so it's, now it's, I can actually help. It's lovely to talk to you while we're, we're doing this. It is true. It's just like a chill... It's a chill way to hang out, right? Yeah, it is. Um, I'll sit and paint. I'll talk to Brandon while he's watching hockey or whatever. Yeah. I'll listen to podcasts. Yeah. I'll put on shows um, and listen instead of... I think I've watched Andor three times while I <laughs> painted stuff. Yeah, or listened to it. Yeah, I haven't really watched it, have I? <laughs> Look up for the good bits. I always find that too, because like whenever I watch, like if I'm watching YouTube videos or something while I'm doing other things, um, I find myself get more productive no i find myself just pausing oh like not doing the thing oh i'm the opposite i find myself not doing the thing i'm like oh no i gotta okay i'm gonna watch 10 minutes and i'm like oh yeah i wanted to do this one thing like if i if i was building an insert for example i'd be like yeah i'm ready to, to watch this show and i watch the show and i get like a single box out of an hour i'm like oh this is not productive whatsoever yeah so i'm the opposite i need white noise yeah. Um, there's a little part of my brain that is able to absorb and think about information. Um, and that part of my brain will complain while I'm working unless I give it something to think about. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> um, I get that too, right? You like, you want to be productive. Like when I was back playing Hearthstone, for example, when I was addicted, I would, that's when I watched most of my YouTube videos. Right. Because I was like, okay, I can at least be productive while I'm wasting my life. Yeah, when I'm uh, when I was when I was editing the recent rulebook video, yeah, the whole time I was like agonizing because I was like, I would love to listen to a podcast or something right now, right? But I need <laughs> but to, listen to listen to, to myself <laughs> gab about nonsense, <laughs> right? I I, <laughs> I, had to, I had to put that paying attention part of my brain to work. Um, yeah, anyway. yeah, I think I'm going to do these guys like this. Oh, cool! So these guys we didn't prime. We didn't right. And I'm instead using this paint, yeah, which is a skill color paint. That's not important for you guys out there. Well, maybe I'll film it. Yeah, okay, um, but it's a, it's just a, it's a thicker, it's a thicker paint. Um, in the painting world, there's a couple different kinds of paints. Um, there's base paints, which are which are pretty thick, and you can't see through them. They're a solid color, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then there are shades, which are a little thinner. Uh, or sorry, not shades. Then there are... Um, this is the one, right? Yeah. Then there are like layer paints, which are a little thinner. You can see through them a little bit, and you, you layer them on top of base paints. Then there are shades, which sort of do what contrast paints do. And then there are... Those are basically the three kind of consistencies of paint. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't listen to a single word you just said, that's I'll be fine. honest. All you need to know is there are paints that are... Do <laughs> you know what opaque means? Yeah, yeah, thick. Yeah, yeah. Opaque means how much light gets. Oh, through, okay. Right? So, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, there's, there's paints... That that's why you said thick. <laughs> Loser. There are base paints that are, um, that are very opaque. You can't see through them. And then there are, are, are a whole gradient of paints that yeah. are, are more and more... Op less and less opaque that you can see through more uh, of. Um, and here I'm just using, you can use any base paint, any, any opaque paint as a primer, if you'd like, Ooh, if you want to skip. Blah. I'm just playing fast and loose now, Zach. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Whatever, I've, I've sworn a lot. Oh, this, have you? This video, I'll just bleep them. No, you, 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 there are probably people in your audience that have children or cats. You don't want to hurt their <laughs> Certainly there are people parents. who have cats. <laughs> I definitely get, uh, like, whenever Artie's on, they'll be like, yeah, cats. <laughs> I, I, I forget. No, I met somebody. Um, I met somebody at Breakout Con, uh, who was like, "I love your cat. Here's a picture of my cat." I was like, "Yes, <laughs> it's the best." <laughs> They're like, "I only watch your video when there's a cat on it, and when there isn't, I stop because I don't like you." But here's a picture of my cat. I'm like, "Yeah, hey, I don't like me." That's some dedication. Like, 
<laughs> in order to find you only through your cat centric videos. Yeah. Pretty impressive. Renee keeps telling me, she keeps saying, listen, you need to do more just cat content on Room Board. I'm like, people aren't showing up for the cat. <laughs> I mean, how much cat content have you attempted to make? I haven't made any cat centric videos. You know what you need to do? Ludicrous. Ladies it's a ludicrous and suggestion. People out in the Room and Board community. Yeah. You've got to bug Chris. You, you can cut this if you like. Yeah. You need to bug Chris and get him to explain to you, or maybe get Renee off camera to explain, yeah. his <laughs> method for teaching Artie to talk. Because, man, if that's not interesting, <laughs> it's, it's wild. That's yeah, true. His manipulative cat. Oh, done now. He's given his cat buttons, and the cat presses the buttons to communicate. It's terrifying. Anyway, that's a game. That's a game you should review. The game of teaching your cat to become a human. Yeah. Building confidence. I am building confidence. I feel like... I feel like I was very... Like, I would be very scared to do this. Because I'm like, look at all the detail that I'm not going to be able to... Like, I don't think I'd ever do, like, fine brush skills. Yeah. You know, you see people who are doing, um... Like, well, you... Who like <laughs> just actually sees the details on the on the minis and is like, oh yeah, I'm gonna add this little thing and that little thing. Um, I remember when you we were like, oh yeah, I spent like a good two hours just doing the etching on this armor in like tiny gold, li like a little etching. I point that out to everybody on the on the oni of uh, whatever. The old Sun. One? Uh, no, 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 oh not not Skamainu. Um, one of the onis, the big blue oni. Oh right, right yes. How he's got his like shoulder plate. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, for sure. People could have done their whole minis if with this video. This video is going to be hours. <laughs> I don't know when we started or how much footage I would have, but I mean, you're going to have a lot of footage. We can stop filming. Nah, we just come back at the end. Well, that's fine. Hmm. Maybe there's something funny. So, huh? Chris, <laughs> don't be overly ambitious. We're never funny. That's true. Hey, hey, hey. It's a miracle anyone since hung around. You got to. Owe it all to your cat. <laughs> now I'm just slopping, Zach. Yeah, slop. Like contrast paint is designed to slop. Yeah. Um, it is. I'm getting quicker every time. It is a paint that's designed to for the first step, right? Yeah. To get color down fast, to get contrast out of your mini fast. Yeah. All the slower steps that take more time and care. Uh, are come after the contrast. Step. Yeah, and that's so, where we stop. <laughs> that's where, well, that's where Chris is going to stop. Uh, <laughs> that's where you stop too. Anyone watching, you can yeah, no you, longer you, paint. Also, you can stop there. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm finding the right balance of uh, w w wet on my brush. Yeah, versus paint. To be honest with you, I I agree. I'm watching you <laughs> do some interesting things. <laughs> But, <laughs> well, tell me to do things differently. No, this is how this is how you this is how you learn. You you learn by by practicing. Um, we're doing contrast and speed paint. The the you cannot fail, right? You can yeah. put in a little too thick. You can. You think I've been doing too thick? I think I've been doing too thick. I think you've been putting in a little too thick as well, but that's fine, right? I think I've gone back to the now now going back to this water well and seeing oh shit I should have just been going back to right. water after the initial. But even just talking right now, this looks so much more beautiful. Right. Well, like, you know what I was saying ones. at the beginning? You don't really need water for contrast paint, but just keep going back to the well, even when you don't think you need to. Yeah. Just a dab. Just a little dab will do you. Yeah. You, the, the, yeah, but dab will do you. Right. Worst case scenario, putting a little bit more water on your brush is just going to stop things from drying. It's going to let you finesse things a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, best case scenario, you're going to perfectly... Uh, ratio your 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 water and your paint. You're gonna thin it beautifully, and uh, it's going to win you a golden demon, which is an award for painting. Is that an award for painting? <laughs> yeah, I thought that's what you were gonna do with those. I thought you were gonna, <laughs> gonna spray them with gold after, and that's what you're, how you were gonna tell me. No, 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 no. It's a it's a good reason to start off with this kind of method mm -hmm. because you're going to develop brush skills while you do this. Yeah, and there's. Literally, there's almost, well, I, don't put it, there's people in the world who could probably somehow botch this, but. <laughs> I, I mean, I am that person, to be fair. But I think for the most part. I it, haven't botched it quite yet. You haven't botched it yet, and I think it would take more effort to botch it than to learn how to do it. 
I really like this blue. Okay, cool. Yeah, they're kind of fun. Yeah. It probably would have made more sense red. Red. <laughs> but, uh... Well, we could... What, what do you think about adding red? We can do a red dry brush. We'll see what dry that brush. looks like. Yeah. Do you think that would suck? No. Or do you think it would be cool? No. Do you think... Is getting into the color wheel going to be too much for, for you or your let's, audience? Let's get into it. I think, like, I, this is... If you're still here, you're interested in, like, <laughs> either hanging out or, like... Taking everything you can from Zach and leaving him nothing. Yeah, yeah. So suck me dry. We're, you know, <laughs> where's that ivory paint? Um, <laughs> yeah. Halloween was yesterday. Get your vampire fangs out. Yeah. And and drain all the talent from my body. When you see next time you see Zach. Yeah. I want you to suck him dry. Mm. <laughs> That's what I'm I have saying. To stay home forever now. <laughs> um. <laughs> Of knowledge. Oh, oh get your mind out of the, out the gutter. Of the gutter, you perverts. Um, cool. I'm going to play with these gargoyles again. What were we talking about? Color wheel. Oh, right, right, right. Um, so if you want to, if you want to get get deeper into the weeds, then we are probably going to get in, the, in this video. Yeah. Um, or probably ever. Or probably ever. Um, yeah. <laughs> when are we going to do another video? Come on. There's, that's not going to happen. <laughs> this is the last one. It's a one and only. It's a one night only. <laughs> one night only. All right. Um, it's not that I wouldn't hang out and paint with you, though. It's just that, like, I, mean, I also would want to hang out and play games. Yeah. If if I had the opportunity, yeah, leave leave the painting to me, and we'll we'll play <laughs> games when you come over because you're you're over so little nowadays, Chris. I know. Well, it's this, this now. I'm I'm getting ahead on stuff. We can. I'm ready for like the best gaming month of the year. <laughs> if you are, I'm ready. Colin said he was interested too, and then he's bailing on you all's thing. But. Yeah, he still hasn't. He still hasn't booked his hotel room. Chris <laughs> keeps sending a message, being like, "Where are we going to live?" You need to book it. I know. I know. Well, because I was going to get. Is this one? Is this one leaning more than the others? Yeah, probably. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little, but not that's not too bad. If it stands up, I, I'm I'm fine with it. If you are, if you want to, okay. We were going to talk about color wheel, but let's talk about morphing your minis back. I kind of know what you do to do in oh, this. Okay, yeah. Well, then teach the audience. Tell me, tell me how wrong <laughs> I am. But you just need hot water. Yes, that's it. You wash it under hot water, and you you kind of form it back. Yeah. So mistake people make: they boil water and they stick their mini in boiling oh water. Oh my god! Who would know? Don't do that. Don't. If you do bring your water to a boil, that's fine. If you've done that before, though, that I I see you. I right. see you, and I probably would have done that. You want hot water. You don't want boiling water, right? So if you do boil your water, let it cool down quite a bit first. Yeah. Um, then you dip it in the water. You let it sort of acclimatize to the heat. And you pull it out, and you very gently move it. And then you return it to the water, and you, you're, you're, you're not making big changes. You're making little changes a bit at a time. Mm -hmm. um, I have only ever had to do that one time. And... So I'm not an expert at it. So if I've just coached you through breaking your $500 miniature, uh, Sorry. Send, the, send the builder room and board uh, care of Chris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, what you do is you sign up for Patreon. Oh. Uh, you just put in that amount. You put in your credit card, and it'll it'll be credited um, to someone. What is the what is the address of your Patreon, Chris? I don't know. It's like is it like it's like below. Patreon slash room and board room and board? Yeah. Okay, because a couple times I wanted to to call it out in a robot club, and I haven't. Uh... Oh. Yeah, well, it's just always in the description. Oh, all right, cool. Because I have the description set up uh, for uh, for whatever, for whatever. Well, just so that like it's got the same stuff. Like the crowdfunding countdown master list is always in there. Um, any affiliate links would be in there, but I I've gotten rid of most of them because I don't really use their stuff, and I was like, well, I don't use that product. Right. A better rule of thumb. This is what people some some people have done. Uh, shout out to Steve. It's like if you're buying a table or something, be like, like let me know, and you want me to get a cut, <laughs> just let me know. Let me know before you buy anything and be like, like a large purchase, and then I'll see if I can contact them and be like, yo, I want an affiliate link, and then they'll think that I sent you, even though you were going to buy it anyway. Hmm. You know what you should do, Chris? Oh, well, maybe you don't want all that stuff, but I know you can do like a um. Amazon. Amazon, like, wish nah, thing. I, yeah. I, don't, yeah, I don't need all that yeah, stuff. You don't want people to buy stuff for you? <laughs> this portion's probably going to get cut anyway for <laughs> oh, being yeah. too... Uh, too honest? No, for being too self-promotional, oh. you know? I, th I think, like, 
this is a this is like a what probably going to be an hour video. <laughs> probably longer. <laughs> probably an hour longer Very video. Well could be two hours. Yeah. I think we could be forgiven for hyping up the way you make your living <laughs> for five minutes. So fear not, Chris. I don't think you should cut it. This blue is so good. Yeah. It is lovely. Just to see what, what future might have been. You should play with ethermatic blue for a, for a half second on like the wings of that one and see what you thought of think of that. Oh, one. sure, yeah. Well, that's the boss, too, so I could just paint the whole thing in that. Yeah, and see if you like it. I'll just paint, yeah, I'll just paint the wings in that blue, and I'll do the main. Yeah, and you'll see, uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, would you ever put a um, contrast paint over a contrast paint? Yeah. Um, like, and what, how would that work? Because, like, could I could I cover this, like, I'd wait for it to dry, obviously. Yeah. And then, uh, could I just cover it with uh, ethermatic blue, or whatever it is? Uh, you know what I mean? So and, like, the, what would be the purpose? The thing is, so, contrast paints, speed paints, paints like that, they're designed to go over top of... Uh, like a white, mm -hmm. uh, light gray, uh, yep. white beige, uh, like a creamy color sometimes, um, because they let colors through them. If you were to put, you work in theater, if yeah. you were to put a green gel over top of a red gel, you'd just get sort of a muddy brown. Right. Right, a muddy brown light. You wouldn't get, you wouldn't get a mix of colors. You know what I mean? Um, I'm glad that... Uh, we had to work in theater to know that, though. Okay. In theater. I'm going to teach them about theater. I'm not going to teach them about paint. So, in theater. <laughs> in theater, they have lights that point at the stage. Ah, they've got lights in theater? They've got lights in the theater that point at the stage. And there are gels, which are little sheets of plastic. I think I think people can get it. Maybe you think not. So? Maybe well, not. Maybe not. You're like, right. Like, you not everyone took drama class, and not anyone's drama class had gel lights. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah, you right? don't know what you don't know. That's fair. Like, you know, you know, yeah, never. Anyway. I'm just being a little, little. You're, you're just being shy. Sure. He's being shy. Subscribe to him on Patreon. <laughs> so, <laughs> in the theater, they have lights, and on those lights, they put a little plastic sheet. Uh, that is colored and those plastic sheets are called gels and the light shines through the gel and it takes on that color That's what I was talking about um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what we're talking about now But anyway, just like if you were put two colored gels over a light you would get a you would get a muddy dimmed color If yeah. you put a contrast over top of a contrast you would you would you would get a muddy dimmed color right, right. if you wanted to put a proper color on top you would want to be using an opaque color like right. Like this blue that I used over here. Yeah. Yeah. This this, does, this blue does look cool. So let's see how it looks. Yeah. So a lot more of the gray undertone is going to come through that one. Slop it up. You know what? They look pretty similar. Much lighter. Much lighter. Also, Chris. Mm -hmm. Close up that bottle of pterodon before it all turns to crust. This one. Yeah. Sorry. No. I don't did. Apologize. I did. Uh, I thought I did close it, but it didn't. You gotta, you gotta, yeah. Ah, it, thank you. It snaps. I've made that mistake. I've thrown all my paints into the box. Mm. I've seen the box leaking. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, I'm gonna do this full, I'm gonna do this boss in this full color. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Because it's close enough, and then it'll be slightly different, you know? All right. He's taking. He's starting to believe in the slop. I am starting to believe in the slop. Have you watched I Think You Should Leave, that sketch show? No. On Netflix? Anyway, there's one sketch I've, I've, I've that I've been thinking of this whole time where uh, it, the, it's just, a, he talks about how he used to, be a, used to be a bad boy. And so he would go to the restaurant and have sloppy steaks and they just pour water all over their steaks. <laughs> and he goes, slop it up! Uh, anyway, I've been thinking about that this entire time. Why I mean, would you pour water on a steak? They just did say, "Oh, get a slot," and they get kicked out for making sloppy steaks, and like the restaurant hates them for making their sloppy steaks. Yeah, this one's so much so watery. Yeah, but I'm using less water then from the yeah because you, you don't need to thin it as much, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that blue looks better when you have a much brighter white underneath. Mm. So the primer does matter. I mean, yeah, the primer does matter, but like. We're, we're talking to amateurs, hopefully. 
Yeah. If there are experienced people out there, they're shaking their heads at both of us. Um, <laughs> but we're talking to amateurs. And when you're just looking for an effect and you're not trying to, like, narrow down the precise effect, mm -hmm. the primer doesn't really matter. Right? Fair enough. Yeah, I, I really like the other blue compared to this. I agree. This one's just fine. But we'll see how it dries, too, right? Like, yeah, it could change a little bit. Yeah. I'm done all the harpies. I'm done all the demons, and I'm almost done all the gargoyles. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zach, I'm not as sloppy as you, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm almost done the gargoyles, which are like a two a two tone process. I'm like, I'm helping. <laughs> I'm helping you cook cookies, Mama. <laughs> Mio Mayo. Okay. Ugh. Um, I guess I guess I'm gonna move on to Goatman. All right, I'm going to do the purple guys, because that's one that I did as well. They're all up there. And I know how to do them. And by the time I'm done these purple guys, we should probably be all finished. All right, now Zach I, will have gotten everything else. Now I've got a... Slave driver's giving me deadlines all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> When I said I spent a lot of time on Blood Rage, I was mostly <laughs> looking for bottles. No, you didn't have enough paint <laughs> back then. How, uh, how quickly did you get all of these colors? Oh, this is a good point. A lot of people who are thinking about getting into painting... Mm -hmm. Go out and buy a whole... Uh, go out and buy a whole case of paint, right? With like 52 colors or some madness in it. Mm -hmm. I have built this collection slowly over five years. Yeah. When I need a paint... Or two or three paints. I see a thing. And I'm like, okay, I want this to be blue. Mm -hmm. I go out and I get a blue paint, and that's it. Uh, <laughs> right? The, you were just playing with the harpies. You yeah. had two different contrast paint blue. Yeah. I knew I wanted to paint your. Oh, I like how it's drying though. Kind of, yeah. it's kind of cool. It gives uh, it kind of an ethereal quality, actually. It's it's athermatic, Chris. That's you know what. Um, <laughs> that, that makes what does sense. that mean? Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, when I was painting, I think your Blood Rage character or your Blood Rage yeah, miniatures, yeah, I yeah. knew I wanted to do one of them in blue and one of them in red and one of them in yellow, I think, and one of them in bone. And so I didn't know which contrast to take. So I just grabbed two contrast blues. I picked the one I liked the most. I used that and I've been using it for five years. Right. Right. Um, you, there's no point in buying a hundred paints if you, A, don't know you're going to use them all and B... Um, don't know if you like them. Don't know if you like them. Um, paints also have a shelf life. It's a long shelf life, yeah. but paints will eventually go bad, right? They'll dry in the bottle. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they'll, they'll go crusty. Um, you'll open up a paint you've never used before and it's, it's ruined. You can't use it. It's the, the, the medium and the pigment have separated for too long. It's gone too long without being shaken and you can't recombine them. Mm. Um, that's how that happens, right? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So, 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 okay, here's a hypothetical then. If you're not painting, just make sure to give your paints a good shake every month. Would yeah. that prolong their life? That would prolong their life. Um, or always give yourself a tiny little paint project. And as you root through your, your case of paints, you know, you're shaking them up, you're right. using them. Um, but that requires you to do a project. That requires, you, that requires you to actually engage in a hobby instead of just true. pretend like you're going to do it later. But if you're hyping yourself up to get into the hobby, don't buy a big case of paint, mm. right? Decide on four colors that you need. Pick a character, say, I want the colors to paint this character. Go it and get those, those colors. Um, it's also going to help you um, make painting cheaper. You look at a big case of paints, mm -hmm. it's 250 bucks. Yeah, yeah. It's a, and, big, it's a big overhead. And you for... look at that and you say, wow, I could get two Kickstarter. I could maybe one Kickstarter. One Kickstarter. I, I could get one Kickstarter Half for a Kickstarter that. Kickstarter I could point. go to the board game store. I could get three games. Mm -hmm. Um, really, you can get started for get two tubes of paint that you need for seven bucks each. Right. And some, uh, uh, some, I've been painting, I'm just putting base coats. I'm not doing any detail. I've just been using these makeup brushes from the dollar store for a dollar. I got four, four brushes. Yeah. You're using an actual, um, 
an actual an actual brush. good brush, yeah. Because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force you to use the cheap stuff. Thanks. <laughs> um, you know how I don't like cheap. Yeah, yeah. Take it one step at a time. There's no rush to paint all of your models at once. There's no rush to get the the materials to paint all your models at once. Mm -hmm. um, that said, I'm also lucky. There is a model store half a block away. When I need a paint, I can walk there and be back in ten minutes. Yeah. Um, you might not have a model store in your town. You might not have that ease of access. And maybe it does make sense to. Where get is this case. model store? You don't know where it is? Is it across the street? No, no, no. That's that's just a model train place. Oh, yeah. They do like RC cars and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. But just past the, you know, the uh, Perry's Perfect Pies? Ish, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. in that direction, right? It's just, yeah, like I think, Dollarama. It's two houses down. I've just doxed myself or something, haven't I? Uh, I, I said Oak Park <laughs> Deli the other day in, in a video, and I was like, well, if you want to stalk you know me. If people really want to stalk us, there are geo-guesser people who could figure out where we are after that video in the back back alley. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, but anyway. Uh, yeah. Should I be putting this taunt back on while I'm painting everything? Um, These feel like they're more secure. They're, they're more secure. Yeah, I'd, it's not a big deal. Would you want me to do that? No. Okay. No, I leave them off all the time. I forget them. And because I'm doing speed paint, I really haven't gone back to the water well. Right. Oh, and like, ones, right? feel free to, <laughs> if you want to, but you don't need to. They look pretty good. Yeah, he looks great. Oh, they do look great. Okay. Yeah, the purple is really nice. Yeah. For these guys, I like I like that choice. We picked great colors. Well, you notice I have a limited selection of speed paint slash contrast paint. Yeah. It's because I'm only going to get it when I need it. Yeah. <laughs> so That's the fair. reason I don't like, we have this big box of paint over here. We, I have we haven't been using it to do this is because we've been focusing on speed paint contrast paint. I yeah. only had eight of them, so right. <laughs> Pickings are slim, but uh, well, you got your inks too. Your yeah, inks I got are kind of similar. the inks are kind of similar. The inks are really cool. I, the inks are very good. Yeah. If uh, if you make one hobby purchase because of this video, yeah, uh, and you're already into painting and you're like, uh, you know, you're you're into buying twelve dollar bottles of paint from Games Workshop, uh, go to your local. Like art store, art store. Buy a couple uh, jars of of, of <laughs> acrylic ink and and laugh forever. It also <laughs> it also airbrushes so well. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, if the oh, it looked beautiful. It's beautiful. I've seen it, and I've been like airbrushing inks is the reason. If there if anything was ever going to make me get an airbrush, get an airbrush, it'd yeah. be. Uh, airbrushing inks, but um, I also don't have a project big enough yeah. to justify that. I can I can help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> See some Etherfields minis over there, Zach. Oh, I know. I've I've left Etherfields part done. That's fine. Well, you've been working on Massive Darkness. As I've well. been working on Massive Darkness. They, they excited me more. Yeah. Um, because of their variety. They have quite a lot of variety. Like I make lots of jokes about everything having demon wings, but yeah. there is quite a bit of VR variety. It was only the stuff that I put in the box, that one box, because they all could lay flat. That's why it was all demons. <laughs> it was like, oh yeah, I can I can cram the most like big bosses into that the base box in order to, so that it's just in one box. I can't put the octopus guy in there, right? Like, yeah. I know I'm taking too uh, much longer than. Well, you know what I've also done, needed. Chris. Uh, I've, I've saddled you with the good brush for two reasons. One, I didn't want to give you a bad brush, and two, because it's it's forcing you <laughs> to be deliberate with your painting. Mm. Uh, I could just give you one of these cheapy dry and brushes, just slops and you all could over just it. do yeah. the slop technique that I'm using right now, yeah. um, which would probably get you through that faster. Eh, that's okay. All right. I feel more accomplished. So that's the, that's the that's that's the drink. Yeah, those demons look look fun when they're dried. Yeah. Oh, anyway, we were talking about the color wheel a while ago. <laughs> did we ever did we ever finish or that? We never <laughs> even got into that conversation. Let's talk about it now. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, hey, different colors are complementary. Um, there's a there's a there's a thing in art you probably saw it when you were in grade school. Um, it's called the color wheel. It just shows you what's primary and what turns into secondaries, right? Sort of on the color wheel. 
contrasting and complementary colors will be opposite each other. Mm. So if you look at a color wheel, if you pull one up on, on an internet browser or whatever, red is going to be on the opposite side of the color wheel from green. And that means a couple of different things. It means that those are complementary colors. It means if you paint something red with green accents, mm -hmm. it's going to look better than if you paint something red with blue accents. Mm. And I suggested put red on blue there. That's... <laughs> That's what got us into this color wheel conversation. <laughs> it's not necessarily going to look bad. Like there are reds and blues that are going to look good, good together. Yeah, those are those are the room and board colors. <laughs> those are the reds. There you go. But no, but I've never claimed to like have any sense of what colors look good right. together. Uh, Renee tells me that all the time. Right. So the color wheel is not a set of hard and fast rules. Yeah. But in general, most shades of red are going to look good next to most shades of green. Um, I think we're going to have to rebrand the room and board colors after this. Yeah, I think I've your colors are good for a while. Really? I don't know. Red's just aggressive, you know? Mm. And I only picked red because nobody else was red. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm like, oh, Dice Star is blue, Rado's green. I uh, like it. I, I think it's it, down's orange. It's a little, it's a little, it's a little sportsy. Mm. Um, like it feels like, uh, it feels like a, your logo is a little bit like, a sports team's logo. Oh, yeah. But don't change your logo, Chris. I like your logo. My, my, I think my logo is more of like a Twitch streamer's logo. I think so. Because well. that's the guy who I got to design it on mm. Fiverr. I was also... So I'm, 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 I'm working on a model of your... A, a 3D model of your thing. You told me this um, that at one point. Uh, yeah, I have, I, have a, I, have a, I have a misshapen Igor of clay up in my room that I'm afraid to show anyone. <laughs> but when it's finally finished... <laughs> Uh, I will give it to you, but I, because of that, I've been I've been zooming in on your logo really close to see what, <laughs> and I I think it's like three different pictures glued together. Oh, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you can see where it was. Like, it was five dollars. Yeah. Um, they, they they used what they had and they yeah, just yeah. crammed them together. I, w I was I was sitting there with my sister without the without the room and board text like across there's a scene. it. There's a weird. It, his stomach looks weird. So yeah. like I have it without it. Yeah, I can give you that picture, but you, and you can see, but yeah. I mean, it's fine. I've been I've been trying to figure out how to represent that in three D because it makes no sense. Uh, but <laughs> I was just like a big belly. <laughs> I was sitting with my sister, and we were looking at the little hexagon your logos the guy's standing on, and yeah. it's definitely just clipped out of of a different piece of art. She was like trying to Google image search that, and she was finding some stuff, and we were like, "That's close." I, I think <laughs> I think that's what it's been clipped. This little map is what it's been clipped off from. But anyway, um, I think it's very funny. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> maybe, maybe too much information for your audience. No, I like that. <laughs> Again, if they're still here, they're clearly painting with us. I hope so. And then it's just like, hey, nice to have people to hang out with in the background. If you're painting with us, mm -hmm. I want you to leave a comment below. And they tell can't. Us they're painting. I mean, dry off your hands. No, you're, you're, you'll screw up their flow. Come back here after you're finished painting. All right, that's fine. But you, it's okay if you forget. Tell us what you've been painting. Yeah. Um... Uh, if you if you were to be kind and, and subscribe to Patreon, you could post some pictures in the that's hobby true. painting yeah. on Discord. Yeah, um, that is a friggin' awesome. Everybody there who posts pictures, I say this all the time. I'm like every picture, I want to say, "Wow, that's amazing!" Uh, but I don't want to be too repetitive. But it's also nice to hear that like your stuff is amazing. Yeah, it's so uh, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. it's all amazing. And if if you don't want to do that and you just want to hear that it's amazing, I believe in you. It's true. I believe in you. Man, it's really giving a case for buying the minis for Old Sworn. So yeah. That's a, that's a big campaign game. Well, uh, every game is a big campaign game nowadays. But, um, yeah, somebody's been painting them, and he's been putting spoilers on it. Yeah. But, like, I don't care. I, I don't care. I I, I, I'm never going to buy a Old Sworn. I've been just looking. They're gorgeous. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're really cool. We got a. Uh, we got some campaign games to get through, Zach. Chris, like I don't want you to be shy. If you get a game and you're like, I want to play this, like, come five days in a row, we'll yeah. bang the crap we'll bang out. It up. Well, I want to do that with Trudvong when it comes in, and I feel we can cut we can cut Brandon from Etherfields at some point. Yeah, and like we'll give him a chance, but um, I'm gonna try to finish Pandemic Legacy with Ryan and Matt. Yeah, and then I'm gonna make a date. I've already told Matt and Dave, I'm like, November 27th, that's a day that we're going to get together. And whoever's there is going to play Pandemic Legacy. And we're going to just make that a rule until it gets done. What do you think of that? Oh, yeah, that's cool. 
That's with like highlighted with the with the Vallejo. Yeah. Oh no, that's highlighted with the. Um, I've just gone dark with your creamy with our with our creamy ivory. Effortless. Yeah. So we started with the black. That black, whatever the black ink, right? Yeah. Just because it was the first black I grabbed. Yeah. You could have used anything. And then you've just been dry brushing. Just dry brushing and leave lots of black left. Nice. And uh, it gives you a little bit of a stony look. Yeah, it really does. Dry brush with that that creamy one. Yeah. I mean, you could have used white. I'm just using creamy because I think it's a little bit more earthy. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree. I agree 100%. I didn't know this was the boss. I always thought I had, we had more of these the skulls. I thought so, too. I was pulling them out to get ready to go, and I was like, oh, shit, I've lost a bunch of Chris's miniatures. <laughs> <laughs> I was googling like what are the gargoyles to buy? <laughs> I got these little worm guys, but they don't have wings. <laughs> uh, you know what, audience? I gotta level with you. I ordered a bunch of pizza. Oh, that yeah. pizza's been got here before we started painting. That's true. And I've been. Are you hungry? I am hungry. Well, let's stop painting no, then. Nonsense. We're gonna finish. <laughs> well, we can finish after we're we take almost it. done, Chris. That's true. We've we've got a lot of. <laughs> Oh, that's the that's the main angel. I was like, who's that? What's that sculpt? <laughs> I don't think we're almost done. I think we got like an hour left. Really? Yeah. So we've we finished the blue demons. Mm -hmm. We finished the pink horses. We finished the yellow goat men. Yeah. We finished the stony gargoyles. Mm -hmm. We finished the bluey harpies. Yeah. We've, we've almost done the purple. There's two more purpley boy boys. Yeah. Uh, and beyond that, we have we need the we need the green. We need the greens. And we need the angels. And, and we the need angels. the cupids. And the cupids. See, I'll do the cupids right now. And you know what? Then we'll just have the greens and the angels. One for you, one for me. But let's be honest. You're still going to be working on the purples. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm a professional. Yeah. Listen, if someone's going to have... I'm, if you ever need a detail work done, send it to Chris. Because <laughs> he's got, he's got the, the dedication. That's true. Ba -da -bum. What day is it? Wednesday? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Survivor's on tonight. Ooh, I haven't watched Survivor since high school. Um, I was talking with Travis Chance on the R and R and R show, the thing I do on Rado's channel on Tuesdays. Yep. Uh, and he runs Come On, or he works for Come On. Mm -hmm. He's like a, a director in there, uh, and he also said that he was like second choice to get on Survivor. And like, I don't care about anything he's ever done in his life, uh, or will do. Except for that, and I just can you imagine, Chris? You you apply to you apply to survive. You get on. You arrive, and it I just know. so happens. No, we would have an awesome alliance. <laughs> I know, but I also don't know. Like unexpected board gamer is unite. I just don't like. I don't know. I don't know if he would go for it. And I feel like there's then you be, then you become too complacent, right? Because you're like, okay, I got somebody in the bag. Because you have like kind of a mutual thing, but then they turn on you. That happened. That actually happened in season um, Heroes versus Hustlers versus someone else. Season 36, there are these two people on the Hustler tribe, Patrick and Allie, and they went to the same university. So they weren't friends, but they had like encountered each other at parties or whatever. <laughs> and so, and, and so they're like, there was this, and it didn't make the edit. You just found this out afterwards, like interviews and whatever. Like they didn't actually make the. I'm so curious. There's got to be hundreds of hours of footage that are fascinating. Oh yeah, for sure, right? Um, but they didn't. They didn't. Uh, they didn't like talk about it in confessionals or whatever, or they might have. But they just sort of. But they. But they're like, we can we can be an we can be an alliance, and then Patrick was obnoxious, and nobody liked him, and Ali was like, I gotta. I gotta kill him. I gotta kill him, even though we know each other. And he trusts me implicitly because of this thing. Like, it's not, he's not gonna be good for my game. And then, so she took him out. Uh, and so I would worry that it would make me too complacent. Believe me, as soon as I found this out, I thought of all these scenarios. Like, I'm not even, you know, that, that that's not a lie. That's all I was thinking about. Right. I was like, okay, so what if we did, we did both get on Survivor at the same time? Um... <laughs> <laughs> you may, all right, you, people out in the audience Chris was involved in a stand-up comic survivor that's true game and every week was it every week or every other week every week every yeah, week eight weeks all of the comics would go to a place and they would do like stand-up comic bits 
Yeah, yeah, or improv, or right. like character work, or whatever. And at the end of every show, they, the comics would vote each other off. And Chris manipulated everybody in that game. It was a thing to behold. Well, to be fair, there weren't that many Survivor fans there. There weren't that many Survivor fans there, but something I need to like relate to the audience of your video here is you only had the length of time for the show and the prep for the show every week, right? Well, you also well, you also had to like rehearse group bits. Yeah, like I I spent so much work on that winning that hundred dollar prize. <laughs> um, like it was there hours and hours, but it was great because it was, like it stretched my stretched my muscles. Like we did sketch, we did stand up. It was the first time I ever did stand up, um, and uh, I'm really bummed. Most of it is on YouTube somewhere, which I I can tell some people. I didn't know that. Is. Yeah. Um, but uh, but the the one episode where I really stood out it was the character episode. Did you see? You I don't know if you saw all of them. I saw. You saw a few almost of you, all. Of them. You, did you see the one where I was the the guy dancing at a club? Yes. Yeah, that one didn't get recorded. Oh, I know, and I was really excited because that character was really funny. <laughs> yeah, and like I wanted to have that like recorded, and it never got recorded. And I'm like really bummed that that was the one because that was the one where like I, I won the challenge for the tribe. It was episode two, and like I won the challenge for our tribe, and that also like helped helped like make people want to work with me. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because people were like, "Oh yeah, he like is a hard worker, and he he can be moderately entertaining at some points." Mm. They need to do a board game or Survivor. I think it would be wild. Because I think there are enough deduction games that people are familiar with and enough Survivor fans that if you were to collect a bunch of people who like were accustomed to social deduction and board gaming, mm -hmm. you put them in a room, I think you would have some real, real strategy yeah. shenanigans going on. Yeah. And I think there'd also be the double benefit. A bunch of board gamers, maybe not great at surviving. Um, <laughs> you would have the comedy of them trying to light fires and stuff. That's true. I think it'd be a double double win. Yeah. If there's a if there's a producer for for uh, for any of those reality shows, grab Chris. <laughs> um, actually, what, what's that show? The the traitor. The traitors. I yeah, think that's, that's just a big. It's a, yeah, there's traitors Canada. It's it's just like a big game of werewolf. Right. It's a big game of werewolf with less information to go off of. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I watched one season of The Traders. The first one? Maybe. I don't know. There was lots of people talking about The Traders. And Suri. I found... Suri was yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I found The Traders, and I watched it, and I was like, oh, this is pretty good. Um, I liked your descriptor of it, though. You what did like, I say? You, you said, it's a bunch of people who are like saying to the cameras, oh, I'm so good at this because I played Survivor. And then no one's ever going to vote me out. And then it's immediately to other people's confessionals of them saying, oh, yeah, I don't care if they're the traitor or not. We'll just vote them out because they're on Survivor. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, <laughs> it was interesting. A um, bunch of people trying to make jump to conclusions based on – they don't get – it doesn't seem like they get almost any information at all. Yeah. They make them do, like, Survivor games. You can watch The Mole. The Mole is so good. Yeah. So fun. You know, I find that – People talk to me about these reality shows yeah. that have like good premises, and I'm like, oh wow, this sounds amazing when you talk about it. And then I just sort of lose focus when I actually watch it. Mm. I think I like listening to people talk about Survivor <laughs> and reality shows more than <laughs> more I like than actually them. watching. Yeah, that's funny. Oh, I probably should have. Uh, well, I probably should put silver on these swords just to be cool. Yeah, well, he's your, he's your boss. You can totally do that. Yeah, I got, but I, I was going to do it before I. Put the paint over, right? Because we do it after, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That paint will cover anything. Right. Like like I've said before in this video, Vallejo acrylic model color <laughs> is such a good metallic paint. It'll cover. It'll cover anything. You commit a murder, you can cover it up. <laughs> you can cover it up. The police will come in. They'll be like, oh, it's a fine silver corpse on your floor. No murder here, I guess. <laughs> what a beautiful art piece you have there. Is that Vallejo? Yes. Oh, very well done. Very well done. <laughs> Whatever you were doing with it, just keep doing it. Mm. Zach, it's time for a pizza break. It's time for a pizza break. Go get yourself a pizza. I'm pizza. Go get a pizza. This makes me want to paint, Zach. I hope so. I mean, you're too busy to do it, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm too busy to even watch TV. I just caught... I was... 
I got caught up on Survivor the other night because I just really couldn't focus. I was procrastinating doing that WSBG video. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to watch Survivor. And uh, I'm finally caught up on it. But it took me f four weeks to do it. Like, I've, I've never been behind on Survivor. I've never been more than a week behind, ever. Like, I'll watch it the day after or something, right? I was three episodes behind, <laughs> consistently. Wow. That's never happened to me before. And then for bases, mm -hmm. it's just black. You can just go black? You just go black around. around you, like, just yeah. get the stuff. That Once again, classic schlop technique. You just schlop it. You, you even need to be less careful when you're doing the base. Yeah. All right. I'm done the purples. Beautiful. I don't mind. I don't mind this seeing it without the, without the silver. But I think the silver itself was cool. I agree. Right. I think we just stick with silver. Mm -hmm. But this is cool too. I just think the silver was more cool. I agree. Yeah. Eight o'clock. I don't know when. I got here around five. Yeah. That's not bad. That's a long video. <laughs> so this brush isn't clean. It's, it's. That's your water. That's just the water. That's just your water. Oh, okay. Also, you might have some blue on the ferrule. The metal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's, the, it's purple that's coming out. Oh. That, not that blue that was from before. I think the purple, because I was just using the purple. Mm. Yeah, if you want, get like right down to the bottom yeah. and rubbing on the bottom, you see that. that yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's probably just the color of your water. I think my water is more blue. Yeah, you might want to replace it. All right. I usually try to dump the paint water upstairs in the bathroom okay. instead of yeah, on, on, on dishes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Meanwhile, Zach's already finished another car. <laughs> yeah, there we go. It's cleaner. All right, Vallejo. Shaky, shaky. That one you need to shake every time you take some out of it. Because the oh, like every single time, to give it a little squirt. Because the the metal, uh, yeah, because that'll settle really quick. And I don't know what it is. That is, and remember, don't use water with that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know what it is. That's uh, I don't know what kind of medium or whatever they're using in there, but uh, it separates from the pigment real fast. Mm. Be generous. You're gonna use a lot of it. Cool. It's real cool. Don't use that brush. Use this one. I give you full schlop permissions. Wow. It's just soaking it up. Oh, that's too much. <laughs> Maybe a little too that's much. Too much. Zach. It's again. Oh, it's all right. I, I fucked it. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked it. <laughs> you did fuck it. Fucked just it. use it on other models as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. take, it, take it from there, quick, before it dries, before it dries, <laughs> that's my palette, it's just on that one wing, that's fair, that I just keep returning to. My favorite rising sun skull, oh yeah, this, this paint stinks. Just it, it, wherever it touches, it just perfectly covers yeah. completely. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. I wish I wish other paints were as it went on as smooth. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I still have so much on my brush. Yeah, I'm you'll be able to it. spread that pretty far. Yeah, I'm gonna take it from my <laughs> your other model. My other model. <laughs> This is my this is my 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 color palette, right? I'm just taking it from here. <clears throat> wow, this paint is so cool. I know. It it looks like you've chromed them. Yeah. Yeah, I got two minis with that one glob. And two even more. Yeah. But like usually what I use that paint for is like I'll go in and I'll paint a single sword. Right. Or a or like a one tooth that's metal or yeah. or what have or like the, the trim on something. Uh, 
And it always goes down so well, and I'm always like, if only I had an opportunity <laughs> to just put it everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I uh, got too much of another color on this or something. It's starting to look a little goldy. It's like maybe I maybe I accidentally picked up that a bit. Maybe. And also it just might be, um, like I said, the paint separates really fast. Mm. So yeah. it might have less of the pigment and more of the, the medium. Yeah, it could. It, uh, could it does be. some some silly things like that. But it also just might be a color that was in that brush that wasn't fully washed out. But yeah. It's now starting to wear. Right, yeah, yeah. Because I think that might have been the brush I did. Uh, did that. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so these are makeup brushes, so they're not designed to let uh, to be look like so immersed in paint. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really just putting like three drops. Yeah, it goes. That should get. It goes. You know, it's like that. Um, I forget. I forget what it's called. But when you unevenly season your food, it's like uh, intentional. Mm. Because uh, if you if you completely evenly evenly season your food, then um, every bite tastes the same. But if you are slightly heavier with some spices in some parts and other not other parts, then every bite has slightly different spice mix, and you like rediscover the flavor every time. Mm. Even if like really you're you're playing in inches. Yeah. Or at least that's what Gordon Ramsay tells me. Seems legit. <laughs> One inch makes a difference between living and dying, between winning and losing. What's that from? I don't know the movie. It's a Al Pacino speech from some football something. Mm. And I remember in high school, there's this like jerky quarterback guy. But every every single game, he had to play the speech from. The Al Pacino movie. Every single you lost seven games in a row, but you had to play the living and dying speech. <laughs> like what the? F anyway, <laughs> I'm like, you're kind of. <laughs> it's not making us play better, man. <laughs> and if, if one inch is the difference of winning, li living and dying, then what's the what's the length of a football field? Because that's <laughs> we're on one end and they're scoring on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye. yeah this is how you don't need to buy metal minis you just you buy this and make them look metal yeah and make them look metal there are people who are like oh i love metal minis freaking get this i think they love them for the weight or the yeah, nostalgia i guess that's right i have a friend who works at a um a games workshop and he always talks, he, like he was talking to me a couple days ago, about, um, I feel like I've heard this story from a dozen times, but he was talking about how there are people who come in who are nostalgic for, like, old pewter minis mm -hmm. that never, that weren't alive when the pewter minis were coming out, right? <laughs> they're, they're, they're nostalgic for an era. Yeah. Um, that they had nothing to do with. Yeah. And he'll be like, hey, why, like, what about the mini, these metal pewter minis did you like? And they're yeah. like, well, wait. <laughs> right? Because, like, they don't, like, they don't actually have an emotional connection to it. Yeah. They have an emotional connection to the history. Right. Not to the, not to the reality of the, the object. Um, it's another weird thing. A Game Workshop had a war game called Warhammer Fantasy. Mm. And it was not popular at all. Their white primer outsold the entire Warhammer Fantasy miniature range. <laughs> like their white primer. Um, and well, white primer is used a lot. It, white primer is used a lot, but like you get a can of white primer for five dollars, you got like a box of five minis for sixty, and right, yeah. the white primer is outselling. Yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway, um, and so Warhammer Fantasy sort of got discontinued, um, and recently in the last couple of years. Um, a computer game company has made a bunch of really popular uh, strategy strategy games using Warhammer Fantasy, and there's a lot of people who would love that that computer war game. It's called Total War Warhammer, mm -hmm. um, and there are people who are like, "Man, 
I missed the boat getting onto fantasy, and they they want fantasy to come back. They've never played the game. Yeah, the game, according to all reviews, it was horrible. Was bad. <laughs> it was a, it was a boring game. It didn't sell well. The um right, but people are have are now nostalgic for a game. Yeah, that was discontinued before they were old enough to start gaming. Did you finish every single mini while I was trying to do these? Yeah, I'm telling you a story. <laughs> Anyway, they're nostalgic for a game. I'm so upset with myself. I'm like, look how, look how easy, look how easy this goes on. It's so smooth. Woo! I was like, ooh, I wonder what needs to be done next. So, like, 18, 21 minis later, I've done five. Yeah, well, that's fair. There's, there's a, there's a difference in skill here. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, it's peculiar that the kinds of things people attach themselves to. Yeah. Um. Is my point. Yeah. <laughs> Besides, I think um, what was that that car game? That car, those car miniatures you used to make fun of. Rally man cars. Rally man cars. Yeah, I know. There's a there's a whole there's a whole community that likes to modify their underground. Or their, their, their little metal cars. Yeah. And I think, you know, welding and stuff is part of that. Mm. So it's important that they are metal. And I think they also use, like, actual car paints. Mm. So there's a... I think, you know, they, they want it to actually... I think some of those enamels and things, they only work on metal. Yeah. So I think that might be the reason for that. But I'm also not in that hobby, so I don't know. They're looking good, Chris. It does look good. They... I. <laughs> I think they'd look even better, like because they're so shiny and angelic. Mm -hmm. the, the the little weird wing bits are just a little bit more garish that they are so pristinely silver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a kind of situation where if I knew we were going to do those guys in silver, I might have primed them black. Right. Because you would you would have been able to easy better tell where you had and hadn't put paint. Right. Um, I I I like how it's turning out. I think so as well. Um, but then you would have also gotten maybe a little bit of black in the very deepest recesses. Right. Yeah, you would yeah. have gotten a little bit of natural that shading. Darkness. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but they look good. Yeah, I'm just making sure I didn't miss anything. My one of my favorite Rising Sun minis is the one that um, the rooster's not painted. <laughs> Do you remember that guy? He's got a little rooster on his head, and it's just gray because you forgot <laughs> you were letting it dry. And yeah, then, yeah, and yeah. Then... <laughs> There's a couple little bit. When we played some of your games that I've painted, there are a couple little details that I noticed that probably no one notices. That I'm like, wait, <laughs> <laughs> I missed that spot. His belt's the same color as his pouch. That's not allowed. Anyway. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This guy is cool. And I'm just going to take this brush and I'm going to put it on this guy's swords too. You know what you can also do? You can give him a quick little dry brushy to lighten up his, uh, lighten up his bring his... him more into line. I think I might need more. It's doing stuff. I think. Yeah. Awesome. Done. Do you want to get your Done. finished shots? Yeah. Well, I figure we just keep this rolling, and then I'll I'll just do it on the phone, and then you can bring down some of your whichever massive darkness ones you want to show off, aka all of them. <laughs> all right, one second. Because basically, I want you to talk about each each piece. Oh, okay. To finish it off. You know, like we'll we'll do a showcase of of what we did. Mm hmm. Well, this is cool. Cause this one's kind of half uh, half painted. Yeah. Yeah. To see the to see the transition. Mm hmm. I'm using a red paint here, Chris. Ooh. And can you guess what the paint's called? Blood Angel. Blood for the Blood God. Ah. And it uh it's it's shiny and red, like blood. Cool. And it'll never even when it dries, it'll stay that shiny. Yeah. I must I don't know if there should be like the pattern on this tablet. Here, we'll what do you do think? That. You can do that. Give me a second. What do you think? Yeah. You mean like splatter or right? Oh yeah, maybe a splatter. Mm. 
thou shalt kill. So if I get this in your head. No, I don't apologize. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I'm sorry. This is improv. Thank you, little blobber. Little blobber. That looks really cool. <laughs> Look, he's just, it's, the commandments are bleeding. Yeah. Or like he's absorbing someone else's blood or. Yeah. Or he's been dipped in blood. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. If he's beating somebody with it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of the big fun things about the more you paint, the more you're finding little details to tell stories yeah. on your minis. So here's, a, we're done. We're done. We're done. Well, we're done mostly. Like, there's still a couple that we didn't prime that we didn't get to. Uh, so what I'm going to show you now in this B-roll, we're seeing these angels, which are so cool. And you see that one we tried um, a little bit of a, uh, what other color did you add on it? I put side? a little bit of a, a, a light sepia wash on it to yeah. try to give it a little bit of a faded look. And we thought it looked cool, but we thought the silver just looked cooler. Yeah. So we got that. We added in some little silver on the boss boy of the purples. Other than the regular purples, they just look normal. We've got all of our, our sort of brown demons. We've got our, our uh, green snake ladies. The little cupids over there. A harpy that's fallen down. We won that battle. <laughs> <laughs> the fire guys look great. The fire guys look really great. The stone guys look good. stone guys look really good. Yeah, they're fun. And you see just kind of like going over each of the satyrs. I like how the satyrs. They look... They're bold. I like how bold. I like how everything in this pool of guys stand out. Mm -hmm. It's not a wash of gray. Mm -hmm. I could pick out any individual model you want me to. Yeah, that's why we kind of mixed them up, right? Or rather, Zach mixed them up. Uh, so those are these are all the washes that I'm feeling really excited about. Yeah, I think that's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then now, just to kind of finish this up, uh, we want to show you things that I personally have painted, but I'll let Zach talk about as if he did. Um, I get to touch them with my bare hands? Yeah, you get to touch them this time. Uh, but remember, I made these. <laughs> uh, I molded them. Uh, and we just want to go through just like some cool images. And if there's anything to say about how you did it, um, you, right. you can talk about it. Okay. Um, this is a big uh, angely dude. Yeah. Um, I dry brushed almost all of him. Okay. Right. I painted his robe in a dark blue, and then I just dry brushed a light blue on top of it. Okay. I dry brushed his wings yellow, and then I dry brushed red on the tips. Cool. And then his armor, I did a little bit of more detail work on. Right. Yeah. But uh, for the most part, he's a he's a dry brush boy, um, and you can get lots of detail with it. Um, That's the so cool. The shield is great, isn't it? The, the shield is so cool. I know. I like how it's like a completely different color, and you don't really notice it. Unless yeah, you unless you it. turn. I didn't. I was. I was not ready for that. Reveal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nothing super cool on the back. Just well, continue the, the fades. The color, the fades look really nice and vibrant mm -hmm. and like dynamic too. Like that's yeah. just dry brushing. It's eh? just dry brush. It's like two different yellows and two different reds. Wow. And then just and then that's just like a solid color. It's just a solid color, yeah. right? And so you can see that I think this is the same red I was playing with down here, mm. but the difference of it uh, in thin coats versus just a big black or yeah. a big block of it. And you get that orangey because, you know, red and red yellow. Red and yellow, yeah. Orange. Cool. So that's that. Um, this guy's a work in progress. Yeah. Uh, he's only really worth showing off because if you are new to painting, um, this is a process shot. I painted his body brown, the hairy bits. I painted everything that was flesh a sort of like a, a, a gross greeny skin tone. Yeah. I painted his skull face white. Yeah. And then it's just going to be coming in and, and adding shadow and thing and, and, and giving definition to all this stuff. So what are you going to do next? Like, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to bring some sort of a dark, dark paint onto his face uh -huh. to bring out the, the detail there. I'm probably going to give him a couple different dry brushes on his fur yeah. to give that a different color uh, type. Uh, and then on his skin, I think I'm just going to sort of add paler and paler skin tones 
until it looks like flesh. Cool. Yeah. That's pretty much that. Um, I love this guy. So his, his flesh in there is this paint that you were oh, using, Chris. No way. Yeah. Yeah. So I started with that, and then I just started uh, dry brushing again on top of it yeah. to bring it up to a higher, higher, uh, a lighter green, and then added details. All of this, this sort of gray stone, it was the gray paint I primed it as, uh, and then a little bit of that sepia paint that we put on that angel. Wow. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, these bandages, I just painted them brown. And then I added a couple thin white stripes, like white stripes and that's onto it. That technique. And like yeah. from a distance, it looks like there's a lot of detail on those stripe and straps. But if you get really close, it's just one color with a one, one sort of slash mm. of white on it. Uh, but because you're looking at models from a distance, it doesn't matter. I don't care. Um, yeah. Cool. So I think that's cool. This guy was a lot of fun to paint. Yeah. Um, I basically only painted him in solid colors. Like I painted him red, then I painted a couple of these guys blue, and a couple of these guys gray, and a couple of these guys white. And then I doused this entire miniature in a shadow paint. In, in a, it's called streaking grime. Yeah. It's for like miniature model painting to make a tank look like it's driven through mud. And after I covered him in that, I wiped most of it off, which left me with this great, <laughs> with the, it looks all dirty and grimy. Yeah. Right? But really, there's just flat colors there wow. uh, with, with stuff on top. And then I, I painted his, his base green, like Evil Magics. And I took a dry brush, and I, I dry brushed mostly up from the bottom some green at the end just to give him some uh, underlighting because this green energy is probably flowing up. Mm. But, like, again, didn't do, like, very simple steps. The same things we played with today, Chris, mm -hmm. are all just here. Um, I know you say that. I say that, but like you make it sound easy. It is easy, right? <laughs> if we wanted to take some of the stuff that we'd already played with yeah. and take it a step further, right? It's just taking steps until you feel happy with it. Right. Yeah. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Well, I'll keep going through. Keep all of them, Chris? Okay. No, we'll just do it briefly. This guy, pretty simple. Uh I just sort of played with with browns. I tried to play with uh, bring him from a red up to a yellow to get some muscle definition and stuff like that. Nothing super fun or interesting there. It was kind of fun to paint. Mostly I had fun painting the base. Mm -hmm. uh, You're really good at making <laughs> bases seem cool. I want to look at, the, we can look at the octopus and the yeah, Care yeah, Bear yeah. next while we're talking about bases. Cool. Uh, big purpley guy. I want him to sort of look like a, a blue ring octopus. Yeah. So I painted him purple and I gave him little rings and dots of blue and, and white. Um, I'm a little sad the blue didn't sh like show up quite as much as I'd like, and I'd have to sort of repaint him to get the blue rings to stand out more. But I like how subtle it is. Mm -hmm. I like his little shield with little uh, yeah, that's what I was looking at. Little squares, little detail that <laughs> you probably aren't going to notice. Um, and then the, your friggin' base. Oh yeah, and the uh, the base. Uh, this was the metal paint you just painted the angels with, Chris. Wow. Uh, how did you design that? Did you just freehand it? I had, dribbled, like... I had dribbled silver paint on from painting other bits. And I was like, all right, well, I'll try to make that into a shape. And I realized this bit was kind of roundy to begin <laughs> with. So I made it a squid. And then I just painted tentacles, and it worked. <laughs> you make it, sound, <laughs> I mean, you like, make it sound so easy, Zach. I mean, like, the thing is, you see a situation like this where I, like, I tried a thing on a whim, and it worked. Yeah. There's a hundred times where I tried a thing on a whim, and it didn't work, and I covered it with paint. Right. Right? That's fair. So, like... You, you get to brag about, like, oh, yeah, I'm some so paint good. dribbled, and yeah, I, yeah. I, I played with it, and it, I managed to make a little squid design. Yeah. But there's a hundred times I tried to play with it, and I hid it away forever from never to be yeah, seen. Yeah. Um, I just get to brag about the times it worked. All right, give us the Care Bear. The Care Bear. Care Bear was fun. Because we're talking about bases, too. Again, this guy's all dry brushing. I painted him pink, and then I just dry brushed lighter pinks on top of him. And ended it with some white. Yeah, but look at all the friggin' detail in that base, you stupid. Oh, well, you want to talk about the base? Yeah. Yeah, no, I just painted hearts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're not even good hearts. Like, if you look at them, like, seriously, they're not symmetrical. They're all, like, sort of gooey. Um, my line work on the, the outlining of it wasn't good. But at a distance, in aggregate, all the little things add up to something great. Mm -hmm. So, like, 
Don't worry about it. Oh, I can't, I can't paint a straight line. Screw it. Right? You go, 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 go for quantity over quality, and and it, it will work out as something. Yeah. I quite like that. And then most of this little detail between the hearts is just little. I just dabbed my brush in some gray ink and then dotted uh, until I sort of arrived at a pattern. Um, but it works pretty well. I like how malicious this little, this little doodle yeah. looks like. The camera's picking up the colors in like a way that my my eye can't. Oh yeah, yeah. It does that. Sometimes you'll take a picture of a painting and you'll see the yeah. underpainting yeah. underneath the paint. Yeah. It's really wild. I love I love this one just because of the horse. The horse flesh looks good. Yeah. <laughs> um, this one had a lot of opportunity for a little detail. Like the silver on the wing, I did a goal and I did the same silver you played with on the angels. Yeah. And I just tried to highlight the wings with it. Just touch it on the, the top tip is, tippity top is tips. Yeah. Uh, and the effect is it makes the whole wing look, look glowy. Well, when really only a very small amount of the wing is reflective. Mm. It's cool. I love the shield too. Yeah, the shield. I find you're so good at accessories. Well, like, yeah, that's just like, you got to pick out, I mean, like all this detail yeah. is already there. I didn't add anything. Right. Right. And I painted the shield silver first. And then I went back with a brown and got the wood. Oh, cool. Right? And I touched it up, I think, a little bit. But I would have thought it would be the other way around. Right. But, like, the, the secret to painting, well, there's many secrets. But you start with the, the, the sort of lowest lowest elevation parts first. Uh, or, sorry, you start with the, you go to the lowest elevation parts last. Oh, Because okay. the highest evolution, if I painted. Bit brown first, first, and then I went for silver. And then went for silver. I it would get would silver on the brown, I would Right, have to it would back. drip down, wouldn't yeah. it? That it makes sense. would drip sense. down. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like, uh, there's lots of points where you you're, you're naturally would be like, well, I have to outline this in silver. No, slap silver, splosh silver everywhere, and then do the much easier job of painting in the lines. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great tip. Right? Great tip. Remember that. Uh, what else do we want to look at here? Well, uh, we can we just rapid fire. Yeah, yeah. We'll look at our scorpion. I want to look at your butterfly too, because I was just noticing the detail. So much detail. Scorpion. I had a lot of fun. I didn't really know how to make scorpion shell look like shell. And I figured, hey, I'll just go for... Where's the camera on this thing? This side? This side. Yeah, I got, I got you covered. Oh, okay. What do you want to look Oh, I was just trying to look at it like that. Oh, yeah. But like... Um... Yeah, there, I got you. Yeah, cool. Um, but yeah, I just decided like, hey... A, a density of texture, even though I don't know what kind of texture that's supposed to be. <laughs> so I just painted dots and I tried to outline blocks of color with other colors mm -hmm. until it's kind of looked okay. Um, I don't know what's going on with his flesh. It's kind of red <laughs> and blue. blue. Yeah, red. It's blue with red. He's a monster. Yeah, I don't know. I was playing. It didn't really work, but it's mostly covered, so you don't know worry about it. Right. Uh, and then I, <laughs> I really enjoyed his claws. Oh yeah, because they have that. Um, Lobster claw kind of looked. Yeah, around. how'd you get that little like this edging? That's stuff? just me using a brush and doing very small little dubs of paint. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Give us a butterfly. Give us a butterfly. I'm still not super happy with him. There's some of the black outline bits that the orange has encroached on a bit when I painted the orange in. Oh, I just think like the little dots, like. <coughs> Like those little dots are so cool mm -hmm. around like those added little details that you can, this is one that I was looking at and like, I think I'd seen before, but I like feel like I've really seen it now. Yeah. I feel like with the massive darkness monsters in particular, mm -hmm. I've been playing around with not using brush strokes, mm. seeing what little dots of paint do, seeing what like, um, what dry brushing can give me. Um, just to like, cause because that, that's a that's a thing I, I sort of neglect a lot of the times, I feel. Yeah. And it can give you a really nice effect when you really lean into it. Um, what's one of those things that, you know, unlike Star Wars model ships, um, there's not actually a lot of detail there, but they, they make the, give the impression of lots of detail, with mm. like lots of little, little dots of color and stuff. Uh, I really like the base of this one. Yeah. I have no idea how I did it. I threw, <laughs> I kept throwing blow, blues at it and it wasn't looking like the ocean. And then I was like, I'm just going to repaint it white. And I streaked some white onto it. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. That's uh, that looks like sea foam. Uh, and it just kind of worked out. 
Um, <laughs> but I really liked that one. Yeah. And then after I painted the boat, it wasn't looking quite right. And I gave, I dry brushed it from the bottom up with blue, mm. right? To make it look like the water's reflection. Yeah, yeah. The, the light is bouncing off the water up onto the boat. Uh, and that's what I mean when you, hey, paint, paint the light, not right. the actual color, right? If I had just painted the color of the boat, it wouldn't have looked like it existed in the real world, right? You wouldn't paint a boat and think to put blue on it, but like, hey, the ocean's there and it's reflecting up. Anyway, I think that's neat. Yeah, that's really cool. All of them crawling on the side there. Yeah. That's like, so cool. <laughs> Let's go back to the octopus for a second. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you broke this. Oh. <laughs> you, you told me you broke this. I was like, which was, which was the one that you broke the staff of? Many, many times. So if we look, there's some gnarliness around his hand. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying be. to get focus. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Uh, I kept breaking off this whole top piece. Um, and then I went to the hardware store and I found a very tiny drill. And I drilled a little tiny hole. And then I couldn't find a pin that would go in that hole. And so then I whittled the toothpick. And then I super glued the toothpick. You whittled the toothpick? I did, well, I had to use a, a hobby knife to yeah. make the toothpick thin enough to fit in the hole. So, uh, and then I super glued it like crazy. And I used some baking powder with the super glue to yeah. try to give it some, some strength. So uh, it'll last until the toothpick breaks. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's but, pretty seamless. But that's also like a really good thing in terms of here, I'll grab this one because this is one of the last ones we have to look at. Sure. Um, the, the, that's a really good thing in terms of like, even with Ankh, I had the, the Ankh thing that snapped off, but instead of being like, oh, this is so horrible, my life is ruined. I just like got some super glue and I glued it back, glued it back on. I was like, oh wait, it's completely fine. Right. Um, I think there is... This is a bigger thing in like fine art than it is in miniatures. Yeah. But um, you know, there's a there's a there's a desire to make everything last forever. Yeah. It's 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 hopeless. Yeah. It's hopeless to attempt to do that. And just like letting yourself it, be embrace free. that the the art exists now Turn. and it doesn't need to exist forever. Yeah. Um Oh, even that shiny, just that shiny on the bottom there. Yeah, I didn't do anything to his base here, but like because he's so red and purple and brown, just a little bit of silver suddenly mm -hmm. means a whole lot. I love the horse face. I tried to go for like a Mustang sort of like mottled sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So he's a little white, he's a little brown, he's a little beige. I like yeah. him. He's good. Yeah. You know, nothing is super special there. I worked from like a, a yellow down to an orange into a deep red at the tips mm -hmm. of his wings. Nothing super special. Nothing, it's really not super special. If we had done this step by step, every single step, you would yeah. have said, that's easy. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's like anything when you learn it. And then this, oh, wait, haven't looked at this guy. Ah. This guy, because you're playing with a lot more color, too. I, I know that you wanted to experiment. Right. Well, also, a lot of these are demons, and I was mm -hmm. like, I don't want to paint them all red and yeah. orange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I was like, I wonder if blue works. His wings sort of reminded me of Goliath from the Gargoyles television show. Oh, nice. And so I was like, yes, we're going to try to make him Goliath-y. Um, and then I was like, what other colors haven't I used for Massive Darkness? Green right. and yellow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. He's a little garish, but uh, <laughs> but I like him. Yeah, he's fun. He's fun enough. Mm -hmm. And then once you get, uh, once you get on uh, from minis, you can then move on to grabbing clay and then sculpting your own minis. Yes, this, this buddy right here is <laughs> one of my favorite things, and Zach just made this up. Yeah. You were just like, oh, I think it'd be fun to make a cool mini. And so you just like, how did you start? You just had a bunch of clay? No, I started with a ball of tinfoil, and that was sort of the mouth. And then I just sort of wrapped him in clay, and then poked the clay with um, the pencil, I think. To try to make a skin texture. Oh, to make it like the like pores? Like give him pores. Yeah. Uh, and beyond that, I just sort of kept adding bits and tentacles and things broke off and then I retried it. Um, I don't think he's particularly special. I think he's really cool. I think he's cool too. But um, a lot of those spiky bits I didn't sculpt. I stole those from model kits. And stuff. Right, right. Um, originally, he just had one big eye and I realized it looked a little... Little vaginal, <laughs> um, <laughs> so I gave him more eyes uh, to try to disguise that. But um, oh my God. anyway, that was... that's um, that. 
that's that. That's the end of this uh, bajillion hour painting video. Yeah. Thanks for sticking with us. No, uh, it stuck with us, Chris. That's true. We're going to see 100 views and one comment. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this the rule book club? <laughs> um, seriously, if you like RPG stuff, you need to go watch Zach's whole series, The Rule Book Club, as we go through rule books of RPGs. Yeah. That's, um, and, and Zach will be on the channel again very soon with your top 20. Oh. That'll be coming out soon. Really? Does mm -hmm. that mean that other thing is coming out that soon? That means that other thing is coming out soon, Ooh, Zach. Ooh, I'm excited for that. That's end, That's Q4 of this year, so mm. I imagine it's going to be December. Cool. Because they had to finish up their other campaign. Um, Zach's, I'm going to just tell people, Zach's, oh, yeah, sure. Zach's top 20 is going to drop uh, when Nemesis the third comes out. Right, right, right. Yeah. And that's coming out soon. I'm excited. I, it's not going to... It's not going to be compatible with the other Nemesis, is it? No, I don't think so. Well, I like it. I, I also can buy this one if we want. No, no, I'm going to get it. Okay. <laughs> I have to complete the set. I have to complete the set. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I think it's it's a much smaller scale miniatures. Mm. But we'll, we'll find out. I'm, I'm, I don't know anything about it other right. than I'm excited. And that it's, that it's competitive mm -hmm. and it's fighty. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's more aliens to, the, to Nemesis's alien. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot about the faces on the demon's uh, on the demon's chest. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even notice that until you talked to me about it right now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, we were trying to end this video. That's true. <laughs> um, hopefully, I'm very, I'm really thrilled with how these turned out. Um, hopefully, this gives you the courage. If you have a whole batch of minis, it'd be super easy to just just slap some primer on them, get a contrast paint. And just paint them. Yeah. Really, like I did that. We did that with the Blood Rage stuff, and it really elevated that. Helped them stand out on the table, uh, and it, it also like do this on the games that you like, right? Do it on the games that you like first. Mm -hmm. I really think so because you're gonna want to play them, and it really just like elevates and helps. I helps want to get it to the table. Yeah. Right. Like you want to show these sorts of things off. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why so many people have have like minis displayed because. And not in a box because they're cool. Like yeah. you spend so much time on them, you put so much time and effort in them that that you want. Like even this, this, this took time. This took time and effort. And I'm very proud of these. I'm very these proud of little, them too. Uh, these little things. Yeah, I'm like, and you're going to get a little flash of like, I did that. Mm -hmm. I made this. Yeah. When you play this game next time. Yeah. And we, that's we will get a flash of Zach did that. That's very kind quickly. of priceless. Uh, yeah. 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 It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to to, to watch. Anyway, um. I don't know. Drop whatever you've, you've already commented in the comments. So that's it. Go paint something. Yeah, you're in a room. There's yeah. there's board games. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you're already inducted into the room and board cult. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, paint the light. Oh, paint the light. Anyway, yeah. My, <laughs> uh, my name is Chris George. I don't have a catchphrase, um, but uh, according to the cult of Zach, paint the light. Paint the light. We'll see you in the next one. Oh my God! What happened? Oh, Zach, no, Zach, I want to... Zach, oh, Zach, no, I'm getting out of the